Untouch Club. I already pawned off my sushi on Cynthia. Untouch. Yeah. Untouch. <laughs> As vice chair of the commission, I call this meeting of the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission to order at 1.06 p.m. This new webinar is being live streamed on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash M-I-C-H-S-O-S office forward slash videos. For anyone in the public watching who would prefer to watch via a different platform than they are currently using, please visit our social media at redistricting MI to find a link for viewing on YouTube. Our live stream today includes closed captioning, closed captioning, ASL interpretation, and Spanish, Arabic, and Bengali translation services will be provided for effective participation in the meeting. Email us at redistricting at michigan.gov for additional viewing options or details on accessing language translation services for this meeting. People with disabilities needing other specific accommodations should also contact redistricting at michigan.gov. This meeting is being recorded and will be available at www.michigan.gov forward slash MICRC for viewing at a later date. This meeting is also being transcribed and those closed caption transcripts will be made available and posted on michigan.gov forward slash MICRC along with written public comment submissions. There is also a public comment portal that may be accessed by visiting michigan.gov forward slash MICRC. This portal can be utilized to post maps and comments, which can be viewed by both the commission and the public. Members of the media who have questions before, during, or after the meeting should contact, should direct those questions to Edward Woods III, Communications and Outreach Director for the Commission at woodse3 at michigan.gov or 517-331-6309. For the purposes of the public watching and for the public record, I will now turn to the Department of State staff to take note of the Commissioner's present. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Please stay present when I call your name. If you're attending the meeting remotely, please announce during roll call that you are attending remotely and announce your physical location by stating your county, city, township, or village and the state from which you are attending the meeting. I'll start with Doug Clark. Juanita Curry. Anthony Ede. Present. Brittany Kellum. Rhonda Lang. Present attending remotely from Reed City, Michigan. Steve Lett. Cynthia Orton. Present. MC Rothhorn. Present. Rebecca Satella. Present. Janice Follett. Present. Aaron Wagner. Richard Weiss. Present. Dustin Witches. Present. Ten commissioners are present and there is a form. Thank you very much. As a reminder to the public watching, you can view the agenda at www.michigan.gov forward slash M-I-C-R-C. Um, I would now entertain a meeting to approve, I'm sorry, a motion to approve the meeting agenda. Oh. Motion made by Commissioner Witches, seconded by Commissioner Lett. Um, is there any debate or discussion on the motion? And actually, before we move on to a vote, I actually wanted to add an item of new business. So I'm proposing an amendment to add an item of new business 6B. And um, that agenda item would be discussing possibly extending the times of our meetings and changing some meeting times. Can I get a second on that motion? So, a motion made by me to amend the meeting agenda to add 6B to discuss extending, changing meeting times. Seconded by Commissioner Lett. All in favor, please indicate, all in favor of the amendment, please indicate. Um, actually, I'll before I do that, is there any debate or discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, let's go ahead and vote on the amendment. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, please raise your hand and say nay. The ayes prevail, so the agenda has been amended to add that new type of business 6B about discussing meeting times. All right, moving back to the agenda as, am as amended. Is there any debate or discussion about the agenda as amended? <coughs> Hearing none, let's move forward with our motion to approve the agenda. As I indicated, we have a motion by Commissioner Witches, sorry, 
um, to approve the meeting agenda. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, please raise your hand and say nay. The ayes prevail and the agenda is adopted. In a public comment pertaining to agenda topic, this portion of our meeting. Hearing no objections, we will now partake with public comment pertaining to agenda topics. Individuals who have signed up and indicated that they would like to provide in person public commentary to the commission will now be able to do so. Please step to the nearest microphone when I call your name or number. You will have two minutes to address the commission. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the timer. And um, the Department of State staff, how many live in person do we have today? We have five in person public comments with one request to speak for a second time. So five total, so six with the second? Correct. All right, so number one, if you could please approach the microphone and speak. My name is Mike Williams, and I'm the Lockdown County Sheriff. And, and before I start, uh, uh, thank you all for your service. Uh, I think sometimes uh, these things can be just what I would describe as thankless jobs, and uh, welcome to that brotherhood. Um, I was disappointed to see that the commission did not keep the communities of Macon, Brashett, Macasa, Isabella, and Clay together uh, per a comment that I had made earlier uh, in the month. Um, I recognize that the commission was under a very strict deadline uh, and that any major modifications to a draft district appear to be unlikely at this time. However, I submitted a map last night and I'm proposing a small change uh, to the draft of District 33 and 35. Uh, the change will make a big impact on keeping communities of interest together uh, without requiring a wholesale redrawing of the work commission has already done. So my suggestion is very simple swap from Waco County into District 35 and move Gratiot County into District 33. Additionally, drop the two townships that were tacked onto District 35 from Bay County, and that's, that's the changes that I'm suggesting. Uh, what will this accomplish? Uh, Nuevo County associates more closely with Lake Osceola and La Costa than it does Macomb or Ionia. Uh, furthermore, Gratiot County strongly associates with both Macomb and Ionia counties. As the county sheriff, I can tell you that these three counties share a state police post, um, which is based in Lake Lee, my county. Additionally, all three counties have uh, prisons, state prisons in them. Uh, so we have a large population of corrections officers living in our communities. Uh, Macon, Miami, and Gratiot counties also work together collaboratively on economic development and land use issues. Uh, there are numerous ties uh, between Macon and Gratiot along the M46 mm -hmm. corridor and M57 mm -hmm. corridor from mm -hmm. two of our communities. Um, while I would like the larger change, uh, uh, I'm at least willing to make uh, this small improvement, which would allow districts 35 and 33 to better represent the communities contained within. A side benefit. Uh, is that the district also becomes more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, while it's not a constitutional requirement, uh, the public is expecting to see uh, districts that are uh, a little more intuitive uh, in their shapes. Uh, and that's what I've created. I submitted a plan to class night through portal, uh, so you can look at it there. Uh, thank you for your consideration. And again, thank you for your service in this process. Thank you for addressing the commission. Number two, you may now approach the microphone and address the commission. Madam Chair, yes. apologies, we're experiencing audio issues. Can you hold on for just one moment? Certainly. Test one, two, test one, two. I think we're good to proceed, thank you. Thank you, all right, number two, you may go ahead. Sorry. Hello, I'm Stacy Young. I'm president of Montcalm Community College in Montcalm County. I appreciate so much the work that all of you are doing. It's certainly a difficult task and also thankless and uh, very important to all of us in the public. I understand that when the commission was created in the current draft of District, Th District 33, the higher education community that exists here in mid-Michigan was taken into consideration. Ferris State, Central Michigan, Mid-Michigan Community College, and Alma College are all included in draft District 33. However, Montcalm County, and therefore Montcalm Community College, has been excluded from this community under the current draft proposal. 
I submitted a map on the portal last night and comments through the portal for your consideration that fixes the problem by reuniting Montcalm County with Macosta, Isabella, Gratia, and Clare counties. I'm appearing before you today to make these comments in person as well, because I believe this issue is very important and worthy of your thoughtfulness and attention. Having all five of Mid Michigan's higher education institutions in one Senate district has allowed our voice and they're the, for the voice of our students and our community to be heard in a unified fashion in Lansing for the last decade. This will benefit our community and something I hope the commission will consider as these redistricting proposals are refined and finalized. The change can accomplish with minimal modifications to the maps, the commission, what the commission has already drafted. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Thank you for addressing the commission. Number three. I'm Dave Eisler, president of Ferris State University, and I wanna welcome you to our campus. We're delighted to have you here today. It's great for us to be able to see democracy in action, and we thank you for your comments. I submitted written comments. I'm here in support of what you heard from President Young. We are Montcalm Community College's nearest, closest, and most hardworking partner. We really would appreciate you considering them, including them in this community of, of interest. I do our government relations work in Lansing. Being from small rural areas, the ability of our institutions works together, working together helps us with budget, also helps us with capital outlay. Thanks for considering these, these comments and thank you for being on our campus today. Thank you for addressing the commission. Number four. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. As you know, my name is Sarah Howard. I'm an attorney here on behalf of the Fair Maps Project of the AFL-CIO. It's nice to see you all here again, closer to my neck of the woods. Um, we have um, put forth our own map, as you know, with a book explaining the entirety of the thinking behind that map online. Um, we know and celebrate that you are keeping compliance with the voting rights Voting Rights Act front of mind in your mapping decisions for both the Metro Detroit area and the I-75 corridor. We strongly encourage the commission to create the same number or more of majority black districts that were found in the 2011 map. We encourage the creation of those in addition to plurality black or minority coalition districts. We want to see the commission succeed, as you know, which is why we've invested so much time in the process here. And we don't want to see the map of the commission exposed to federal litigation under the Voting Rights Act um, for retrogression. Um, more importantly, though, I think is the issue of seeing that communities of color in Michigan are adequately represented. And part of being adequately represented is partisan fairness. It is key and it is crucial. Um, for individuals in communities of color to have adequate representation, they have to have representatives who have a fair shot at actually delivering results for their constituents. And again, that requires partisan fairness. Um, it doesn't do communities of color, or frankly, any other citizen in Michigan, any good to have representatives who um, don't have a fair shot at making a difference, providing results, um, if they are, um, if they have no hope of effective action in the legislature, because the opposing party enjoys guaranteed permanent control of our state legislature. That's why the work that you're doing here is so important. And it's why considering partisan fairness numbers, along with all of the other criteria that you're required to consider all along the way is so very critical. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the commission. Number five. Good afternoon. I uh, hold no office except that of citizen. And I'm thankful that you're here today. I worked a lot, uh, went to a lot of houses to get this law passed. So I'm uh, grateful that you're here. In Macosta County, we're divided from rural to urban. I live in Wheatland Township, the unincorporated village of Remus. A wonderful place to stop on your way back to wherever you're going. Uh, we are a very diverse community, uh, economically, socially, racially, and we are 
protected by the sheriff who just left. Uh, we take great pride in taking care of each other. But when it comes to political boundaries, uh, we really are socially, economically, and obviously culturally connected to Mount Pleasant or to Isabella County. And I hope you'll consider that uh, as part of your, your uh, task here. I know that's difficult, but our state uh, representative is up in Wexford County. That's not really related to anything that we do here in Macosta County, or at least in the Eastern half of the county. Thank you for your consideration. Good luck in your task. And I uh, truly appreciate the fact that you're taking this seriously. Thank you for addressing the commission. So I know we had one person who asked to speak twice, just so that um, people who are here understand how we sort of operate. We normally go to the remote public first comments first, and then we will come back to the person who requested to speak a second time in person. So just so there's no confusion, I haven't, I haven't forgotten about you and I'm not skipping over you. We just do the first persons or first time speaking first. So individuals who have signed up and indicated they would like to provide live remote public commentary to the commission will now be allowed to do so. I will call your name and our staff will unmute you. If you are on a computer, you will be prompted by the Zoom app to unmute your microphone and speak. If you're on the phone, a voice will say that the host would like you to speak and prompt you to pick star six to unmute. I will call on you by your name. Also note that if you experience technical or audio issues, we do not hear from you for three to five seconds. We will move on to the next person in line and return to you after they are done speaking. If your audio still does not work, you can email us at redistricting at michigan.gov and we will help you troubleshoot so you can participate during the next public comment period at a later hearing or meeting. You will have two minutes to address the commission. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the timer. First in line to provide public comment is Mr. James Gallant. Can you hear me, Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. This is James Gannett, Marquette County Suicide Prevention Commission. And I emailed the commissioners the uh, the minutes, or not the minutes, but the uh, the rules of procedure from the Michigan Commission on Legislative Apportionment, which this commission has been determined by the State Supreme Court to be a reviving of that commission changed it to independent citizen redistricting commission, added five uh, non-political uh, uh, appointees because was, back then there was still four Republicans, four Democrats, and now they just added four non-affiliated. So we just revived that commission. And I sent you, those are the codified rules of procedure that you were supposed to, that uh, Secretary Benson was supposed to have started with at the first meeting. And you know, during that, it says clearly that the Robert's Rules of Order applies, except no motion needs a second. That's, that's an interesting one. And that also, this was 15 years before the Open Meetings Act. So the, uh, it says, apparently clearly, it says meetings are open to the press and the public, and the public is allowed to present written materials before, and they have to be before they uh, make their presentation. So these rules were already spelled out. And like in America, your attorney has already told you, these rules apply to the next iteration of this. Well, the ones from before apply to this one. And that was overseen, and I believe that that was Mike Brady. This was, Secretary Benson sent this to somebody, sent to Mike Brady, he's the attorney. So he's the one that determined all this. And we need to get this uh, straightened out. And I wish you would... Uh, vote to send this to the uh the legislative council so that we can review this about their authority to oversight the staff of this commission legislative commission uh are you still there thank you for addressing the commission uh next to address the commission is robert dindoffer please wait for our staff to unmute you Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Hey, uh, so I, I was the big map guy um, and uh, with the Lake St. Clair community of interest in Ann Arbor. And I, I, as you're going to be drawing state Senate districts in the area soon, I, I wanted to, um, I, I guess, suggest that uh, when drawing 
VRA districts that you attempt to work with the communities of interest in the area um, rather than breaking them up. And I'm sure you all would want to do that in the first place, but uh, you know, I, I just over the weekend tried seeing what I could do in that regard. And I was thinking, you know, on each side of eight mile, is there a corridor that, that kind of fits? I thought the Gratiot corridor, the Mount Van Dyke corridor, and the Woodward corridor all really fit very well. Um, the Lodge and Grand River corridor through Southfield and Farmington Hills in Northwest Detroit also works really well. It's not the only way to do it, um, but it's one way to do it um, that seemed to make sense to me. And I wanted to throw that out there as a suggestion. Um, and, and importantly uh, for me personally and for the other folks in my area, um, the, the Lake St. Clair community of interest doesn't need to be broken up in order to make, I believe, six VRA districts in the state Senate in Metro Detroit. Uh, you, you could easily do that without breaking up our community of interest and allowing us to protect our lake. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for addressing the commission. Number three is Nadia Alama. Please wait for our staff to unmute you. Thank you, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you, thank you so much for your time today. I'll just be joining as audio. Um, everyone, thank you for your time today. It has come to my attention as a daughter of immigrants who gave birth to and raised me in our beloved Michigan, that the commission is not spending nearly enough time on the maps in Metro Detroit, Flint, and Saginaw areas. Please look for common ground. Get to know these communities and see how your life can completely change for the better for it. My community includes Pakistani and Bangladeshi Americans, African and African Americans, Middle Eastern Americans, Eastern Europeans, and Native Americans, and more. The 20th anniversary of 9-11 is around the corner. This is an event that really also hurt my international Muslim American community in Michigan. And we've made home here. We've built hospitals, schools, grocery stores, and the restaurants where you get your favorite takeout. We've done community outreach and looked out for our neighbors to make sure they won't go hungry. We've been a part of making this state a great place to live. And we really love it here. We love our communities and we love our neighbors, and yet we've gone unheard. We're told that our voices don't matter as much. So I implore you, please fulfill your role and duty and give them more time, give them more than a couple of days and listen. Even after all this is said and done, we're still your neighbors and we'll still be living together with all the decisions we have made together. Please don't forget this has a 10 year impact. Not only will it be unconstitutional and neglectful of your civic purpose if you ignore them, but please know we're not going to allow our communities to continue being disenfranchised. Please think of them when you're considering what time you have left. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next is Brandy Nash. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, my name is Brandy Nash and I live in Eaton County. Um, I respectfully would like to submit my comments in regards to Senate districts 30 and 32. I do not believe the communities of interest are fairly represented in the proposed maps. Eaton County is fairly, fairly rural and should not be drawn in with the city of Lansing as we do not share communities of interest. Case in point, Eaton County shares a health department with Barry County, not Ingham. I do not affiliate with the city of Lansing, nor do I want to be represented by anyone from the city of Lansing. Um, I believe the better approach is to encompass the cities of Lansing and East Lansing as they are tied together as communities of interest. They share school systems, a health department, and they share the common thread of being urban. I would like to submit for the record that as a resident of Eaton County, that my county has much more in common with the counties of Clinton, Barrie, Shiawassee, and Ionia as each have rural communities than we ever would with the urban communities of Lansing and East Lansing. Please make sure my county of Eaton is fairly represented by not including us with the urban communities. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the commission. Um, I believe next is Brendan Allen. For the purposes of the public record, number five is not present and neither is number six. Thank you. We will move on to Chris Andrews. Uh, 
including free dis uh, fair districts. Um, thank you. Uh, it's hard to comment when you don't have the political context to, uh, uh, to assess fairness. And I'm sorry, I'm getting my buttons wrong. Um, somebody might say, don't break up Lansing or don't break up Bingham County. Uh, but they might not say that if they knew that was the path to two competitive Senate districts. Um, and I commend uh, Commissioner Ede for uh, coming up with a plan to draw two Lansing region Senate seats. Uh, this is, I've seen some people call this a gerrymander. It's the opposite. It intentionally creates fair and competitive districts. I would add that I lived in Delta Township in Eaton County for 10 years. And I always considered myself a part of Lansing. And uh, there are far more things that connect it to Lansing than, than separate it. Um, the, the last thing I, I would say is it's hard to figure to see what you guys are doing. And I'm looking for maps. I don't see them available online. If they're there, you need to make them uh, more available. And uh, um, I, what I get to is something that says coming soon. And you've had some districts that have been drawn uh, uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago that, that we can't see. And I would also say, uh, recommend that you pr find a way to provide a summary of what you're doing that uh, uh, I can't, I don't, I, I think you're close to the end of the House and Senate. I'm not sure uh, you've got a talented communications person and perhaps if he put together some kind of a uh, uh, ongoing daily summary of what's what you what you've done today and what's doing next you're doing next that uh, helps give us a better context um, that would be extremely helpful uh, thank you thank you for addressing the commission next in line is norm Schinkel. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Very good. Well, I'm happy to be uh, in front of this commission today. Uh, I've had a, a lot of time in my life of public service. I'm talking about the state Senate proposed map by uh, Mr. Ede uh, in the 32nd uh, Ingham County seats. I've lived in Ingham County for several decades now. I, I work uh, both several times. I've worked different jobs in the city of Lansing. Uh, and I know many people that work in Lansing that live in East Lansing. I also work part-time in East Lansing for MSU with many of my coworkers living in Lansing. The two cities represent one community. Lansing and East Lansing is the urban core of mid-Michigan. They share the same water, police services, fire chief, court systems, healthcare networks, a zoo, and a transit system. If ever, Two communities share communities of interest. They are Lansing and East Lansing. Separating Lansing and East Lansing is exactly what the independent commission is to prohibit from occurring. It is the definition of gerrymandering. It creates two Democrat seats, unlike what the previous speaker was talking about. These two towns deserve their own district. And the last point I want to make is East Lansing is, is famous for there's sporting events in the Breslin Arena for basketball. And what stands in front of that Breslin Arena for basketball? A, a, main, a big bronze statue of Irving Magic Johnson. Well, Irving Johnson grew up right down the street in the city of Lansing. The two communities are one. As the former state senator, I value what you're doing, and I urge you to adhere to the constitutional guidelines given to you. Thank you for letting me speak today. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next in line is James um, Hugolette. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, hello. My name is James Hugolette. I'm a resident of the city of Perry. And I uh, have uh, 
spent a number of years in public service. I am the retired mayor of the city of Perry, and I have reached out to the commission today to express my concerns about the proposed map and the communities of interest that we, we share. Shiawassee County, where I live, is a rural county, and we have much in common with our neighbors in Clinton County, Eaton County, and much less in common with our neighbors in Ingham County and in Genesee County. And to lump us in with those groups not only breaks up the interest in those urban communities, but it breaks up the community interest in our small rural community. And it deprives one side or the other, depending on who's elected, for a chance to have their voices heard. We've seen success in Michigan's history, legislative history, in keeping communities of interest together. And an example of that is the Right to Farm Act, where rural legislators were able to have their voices heard, the voices of farmers, to make sure that they would have the opportunity to continue farming, even as people from the city moved into their communities and objected to the things that come with farming. I also want to express my concern with breaking Shiawassee County up into different districts. The 85th district as it exists now keeps my community of Perry in with people who share much more in common with folks in Perry than does the people in uh, Lansing and East Lansing. And we, our voices are better heard by being part of Shiawassee County's district. Uh, the other thing I wanna point out on that is in my community over my adult life, the um, communities of Perry and Woodhull Township have been flipped back and forth between the eighth and fourth congressional districts every 10 years, and we're tired of that, and we would ask this commission to not do that. Thank you very much. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next in line to speak is uh, Bruce. It appears Bruce is experiencing some technical difficulties. Um, so perhaps we can return to him after our second round. Sure. All right, now that the opportunity for both in-person and remote public comment has concluded without objection, we will now hear from individuals seeking to provide a second two minute public comment. Hearing no objection, we will now proceed with individuals seeking to provide a second two minute public comment. Individuals who have signed up and indicated they would like to provide in-person public commentary to the commission will now be allowed to do so. We will follow the same process as the first round. Um, you will have two minutes to address the conclusion. commission. Please conclude your remarks when their two minutes has ended. Number one. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, again, my name is Sarah Howard. I'm here representing the Fair Maps Project, and I appreciate the time to address you for a second period. Um, we think that the commission took a great step yesterday toward partisan fairness and toward respecting all of the criteria that you have to respect by drawing the two state Senate districts in the greater Lansing area. There are a lot of things that make a community and a community of interests. And to say that rural or urban um, or other types of services or interests um, necessarily must go together means that you have to ignore um, the totality of the things that you're required to take into account. Um, and there's no way to achieve partisan balance by packing urban areas. But the partisan balance that you have so far with the work you've done to date is still unfairly partisan biased. If you take a look at what you have so far, you have roughly 15 leaning Republican or strong Republican seats to roughly four leaning or strong Democratic seats. And the population trends in the maps, map areas you've done so far would call for about roughly 11 Republican, eight Democratic. Um, and this is further illustration of the point that ignoring partisan data to the detriment of other types of data, other types of interests, 
only results in an unintentional partisan gerrymander. In the end, an unintentional gerrymander of partisanship is no better than an intentional one. Um, the good news is there is time to fix this and the commission is doing lots of good work in that direction. We want to encourage that. The commission should start by unpacking the greater Ann Arbor area. Most public commenters have said that they would like to see Western Ann Arbor with um, Jackson County. And we believe that unpacking would do a lot to achieve partisan fairness. We want the commission to succeed and we think the best way to do that is to continue to look at the partisan fairness criteria throughout the work you were doing and not merely at the end of the process. Thank you so much. Thank you for addressing the commission. I would like to remind everybody to please go to the public comment tool and share your comments in writing, including any specific areas of the map about which you are speaking. The public comment tool is available at www.michigan.gov forward slash MICRC. Um, we will now move back to live remote public commentary, and at this time, I would ask to see if Bruce is available and, and able to speak. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Hey, thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the redistricting committee. Thank you very much. Yesterday, I saw a map of proposed Senate districts surrounding and including Lansing. This map included half of the city of Lansing with Eaton County and a part of Ingham County. In my opinion, taking into account the importance of communities of interest, Lansing should not be included with Eaton County. The Lansing community of interest is much different than the rural community of interest that is Eaton County. Eaton County should be included with the counties of Barrie, Clinton, Ionia, or Shiawassee counties. Eaton and Barrie share a health department and those two should definitely be together. Um, that's it for me. I appreciate it and thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Bruce. All right, at this point, we will move on to Mr. James Gallant. Can you hear me now, Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, this is James Gallant, Market County Suicide Prevention Coalition, and these are my opinions. And uh, pick up again where I left off here, I, was, I have provided to you copies of, from the, from the State Archives, the rules of procedure for the commission on legislative apportionment, which has been determined to be revived. So this is just a name change. So I'd like to read the first paragraph to you. And it says, the commission on Legis legislative apportionment, which is now the independent citizens redistricting commission, shall be organized by electing two co-chairs, one from each party's commissioners, and the chairmanship be rotated with one co-chairman presiding for one day and the other co-chairman presiding, presiding the next day. Each member of the commission shall be entitled to one vote, including the presiding officer. Absent chair can designate a member to act in his stead. See, these are the codified rules of procedure that you are required to, uh, to follow. This was the beginning of what you were doing there, and it was never followed. And then you could change the rules from there. You know, you this... Uh, the Secretary of State has, in my opinion, wrongfully supervising the administrative staff of this commission. That is the job of the Legislative Council Administrator. This is a legislative commission. It is housed within the legislative branch of government, and the executive branch of government is interfering. This is the separation of powers. Now, I would ask that you would vote to just to refer this issue to, this, to the Legislative Council, to ask them to have a special meeting, and determine what their opinion is on the subject of, I believe that Secretary of State, when this ballot proposal passed, did not uh, refer, did not, uh, you know, hand it over to the uh, Legislative Council Administrator as required under the, uh, the, the Supreme Court decision that said that the, even the, the uh, politi uh, voters, not politicians, court case determined. Addressing the commission, Mr. Gallant. 
That concludes our public comment for this afternoon. However, I'd like to mention that all emailed and mailed public comment is provided to the commission before each meeting. And the commissioners review the public comment portal on www.michigan.gov forward slash MICRC website on a regular basis. We appreciate everyone who provides public comment in whatever way they choose to do so and invite you to keep sharing your thoughts, communities of interest and maps. <clears throat> At this point, we are going to move on to our unfinished business on our agenda. And I will hand the uh, floor over to our chair. Um, but before I do that, I will mention that our general counsel wanted to, uh, to address the commission before we begin the unfinished business. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. And it is an, an awkward way to address the commission with uh, my client sitting behind me, of course, but I'll focus on the microphone. I just wanted to highlight that as the commission continues to move forward with its mapping work, that it's critically important that your legal team continuously highlight the constitutional criteria, as well as the legal framework under which redistricting occurs. This is particularly important now that you are actively mapping and creating the public record of your decisions. I remain available for, to the commission for questions and, and welcome all questions and contacts. And I would also like Bruce to, uh, Mr. Adelson, excuse me, to provide uh, a summary uh, as we go into um, the work on the agenda today. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you and good afternoon. I have to share, um, General Counsel's comment, it is a, a very weird vibe to not look at my clients. It, it is very, it's very unusual. So I'm gonna just stare at the microphone and please don't look at that as being in any way unprofessional or disrespectful. Um, yeah, uh, General Counsel Petula and I have the wonderful opportunity of working together. We consult and communicate regularly about various issues concerning the constitutional criteria, the federal criteria, and other issues under Michigan law. There are some uh, points that I wanted to, to raise in particular today. As you move forward now with the benefit of Dr. Handley's racially polarized voting report or excellent report, and our discussion last week about essentially what the report means, I think it's important to note several issues. The racially polarized voting um, requirements under the Voting Rights Act and applicable Supreme Court precedents is not the same as the constitutional criteria concerning diverse populations of the state. As you know, there's nothing in the Constitution that relates to racially polarized voting, talks about it, or makes it any kind of requirement. So that is a specific issue for the Voting Rights Act. And as you as we talked about last week, and actually as I've been seeing in uh, the media and talking to some folks around the country, the whole issue of racial block voting is getting a lot of currency these days uh, in many, many states. Uh, as more people look at the federal constitutional requirements and the necessity to have racial block voting analysis guide the percentages of uh, minority populations in in given districts. Uh, I would also um, eagerly advocate that as we get into, and as you are into some particularly significant issues and in, in geographic places in the state, if you have questions, concerns, or uncertainties, please ask your legal team. Uh, that's why we're here, of course. We are eager to speak with you, answer your questions, resolve any doubts that you have. And as I was reminded just coincidentally this morning with a phone call that I have, that I had, uh, I have the unique um, position of, of being the only person to have sat through a statewide redistricting step by step to the draft public hearings, draft maps, final maps, sitting in the U.S. District Courtroom, sitting in the U.S. Supreme Courtroom. Um, so I'm eager to be able, as my colleague, to share with you, talk to you, answer your concerns, and address any uh, misconceptions. Because as we talked about initially, redistricting is a legal process. There are specific legal requirements and a lot of court decisions. And as we saw last week, the Department of Justice opining with its latest guidance 
on the federal law, Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, and some court decisions that apply to redistricting. As I had said last week, DOJ never just speaks accidentally. They always speak with a purpose. And I think their purpose last week was just to remind everyone that they're there, they're watching, as they said in the guidance, and observing to make sure federal law is complied with. So please keep in mind, going back to the diverse uh, populations requirement, that that is different than the um, Voting Rights Act. And I would also add that there are going to be populations around the state that are, as Dr. Hanley talked about last week, that are small, that will not make up a 30, 40 percent uh, minority population in any given district. They, th the, it is important to realize that whether or not they qualify for they're numerous enough to constitute a majority in a single member district. It is important to note that the Voting Rights Act protects people on the basis of race, color, or membership in minority language group or national origin. So that for, um, let's just say a hypothetical commission, looking at individual disparate groups of people, minority people, and either separating them, combining them in a way that uh, may impact or impair their right to vote in, under federal law, that implicates, while that may implicate the Voting Rights Act, that likely does implicate, in my opinion, the Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment. So these are issues that I see pretty regularly around the country. Just as a reminder, the issue is not, the dispositive issue is not, does a particular group constitute a majority? in a single member district. That is of course crucial, but there are many, many, many other issues. And the um, issue of potentially disparate uh, minority communities is of uh, significant interest to your legal team and continues to be as I know it is to the commission and something that I'm sure we'll be talking about in, uh, in detail. Also, as you move into the Detroit metro area, as you know, there is a significant population of people of Middle Eastern descent. Uh, Middle Eastern descent is not a separate category under the census. However, they are protected by the Voting Rights Act. There is a, a public comment that I recall sometime this summer that addressed the geography of, of that population in the Wayne County area. I thought it was a really well thought out comment and does give some thought to how to address Voting Rights Act and constitutional issues with this um, particular population. I wanted to mention as, as a, a final introductory point that in my avid watching of the commission in person or virtually, that last week, my recollection, I think it was last week, that the commission created a majority minority district in Western Michigan. I don't remember exactly the area. I think it might've been in the Grand Rapids area. As I recall, the percentage was 58%. Now I know that that was not an issue that you were uh, actively looking at uh, prior to Dr. Hanley's foundational um, racially polarized voting report, but that really struck me. It struck me and General Counsel and I have discussed this, that there may be populations out there in numbers that we have not been aware of. You also created, as I recall, a 45% minority plurality district, also in Western Michigan. And as I watched those numbers on the screen, I was very impressed and also quite surprised that the populations were this large. So that's what redistricting is. You often discover a lot of information that may not be apparent on the surface. And that's just a great example that happened in real time last week. So again, it is, it's, a, it's my pleasure to be here with you again. And it's always my pleasure to interact and talk with you. So I hope we have an opportunity to talk further. I very much appreciate Madam Chair and my colleague General Counsel's uh, opportunity to address you today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce, and I'm sorry, Mr. Adel Mr. Adelson and um, General Counsel for providing that introduction and information. Um, commissioners, it doesn't seem that you have any thoughts or additional things for them. So at this time, um, we will move into our unfinished business. We're just we're just about finished with the state Senate districts in the Thumb area and East Central, excluding Saginaw and Genesee counties. 
Um, I'm thinking it might, though, be a good idea to look at those areas just to see if there are things that we need to fix or add or adjust. Commissioner Witches. Um, I was actually looking at a different area. Um, I think that we, we really need to look at the Monroe, Lenaway County um, district that we drew, mm -hmm. include, include all of Lenaway and Monroe in one particular district. Um, because we have the district as drawn going into Hillsdale County in a kind of an odd way, and it is causing a problem in the Kalamazoo and Battle Creek area. Um, it's going to be much easier to gain population, stay out of Wayne County by including all of Lenaway and Monroe, allowing us to make finer adjustments in Barry, Kalamazoo, Calhoun, Branch, St. Joseph, Cass, and Berrien counties so that we are not many, many, many thousands of people short when we're working in the district that we're going to create in Kalamazoo and Calhoun County for the Battle Creek and Kalamazoo areas. Um, but I do think that we need to revisit that before we move on into drawing Saginaw and Wayne County areas, because it's just going to cause more of a mess later if we don't fix this now. Okay. Um, commissioners, are there any extra thoughts on that before? Can, can you pull that up? Yes, please. Yeah, she said. <laughs> yes, um, uh, Director Sue Hammersmith, you have the floor. I just wanted to mention that we have limited availability of Mr. Adelson today and on Tuesday. And we really wanted to get into the areas where we need that critical um, guidance from him. So I hate to pivot yet again. But I think it might be wise to um, utilize uh, what, you know, the expertise that we have mm -hmm. while we have it. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Commissioner Witches, and then I see Commissioner Clark, you had your hand up, sorry to speak. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay, well, then my, then my uh, suggestion at this point in time would be to um, just make the adjustment on uh, the district that we have drawn for Lenaway and Monroe, make those two whole for now, erase everything that we did in the, in uh, Barry and Cass, St. Joseph Branch, Hillsdale, Kalamazoo, Calhoun, Barry, that particular area so that we can come back to it. Because if we keep Monroe as it is and we draw into that when we're working in those areas while Bruce is or Dr. Adelson is here, um, we are going to run into a problem that's going to be even more difficult to fix at this particular point. I will I will make that a motion actually to to erase those particular districts and set 26 to include Lenaway and Monroe County in whole at this point. Um hold on commissioner Widges. Can I get commissioner Lang and then vice chair Zatello? Yes, I want to know when we would be proposed to go back and look at the maps that we've already drawn because there's a couple areas that I have concern with based off from a lot of public comment that we've received today and in the last couple of days. So if we're doing the Detroit area and understand doing that, why we have the resources to do that here today, when would we be going back and looking at these other areas then on Monday? Madam Chair. General Counsel. Thank you. I apologize for the interruption. Uh, pardon me, Commissioner Lang, but I'm not sure that Mr. Adelson does not have limited availability today. So to the extent any of that is driving your current discussion, uh, and I'm not, uh, there's no limited, he, he'll be with us through eight o'clock this evening. Yeah, and, and he'll be present virtually next week through the entire meeting. So uh, so his availability is, is, is open for the commission. But next week, there'll be a couple of days without correct. That, I guess that's what I'm saying. I apologize. I didn't mean as far as today. But. Yes, Commissioner Lang, but the holiday, is that what you're thinking of? Yes. That he would be unavailable? Yes. Yes, thank you. That so with the fourteenth full time today and the fourteenth and the seventeenth next week. Thank you. Vice Chair Zatella, please. 
Yeah, I mean, I just say if we have him here, let's focus on the Detroit area. I, I don't want to just start erasing things without giving it more thought. I mean, it's not like it's fixed in stone at this point. We know we're going to come back to Commissioner Lang's point. I'd say let's use our expert while we have them, work on those areas that are more tricky. And then we're obviously going to have to revisit them because we have a bunch of gaps as it is. Okay. Um, Commissioner Witches, I'm going to let you speak and then I'm going to kind of make a decision. Well, I have a motion for one. I'll and, second that motion. And two, um, <laughs> then we need to, we, we just need to make sure that we take Lena Wayne Monroe and move them into one hole. Because if we start working in Detroit and we paint ourselves in another corner right there, when it comes to Monroe County, it's going to be messy when we have to go and fix it. So I think we do need to do what I suggest. It's not good. Those districts that we drew yesterday in that particular area did not take very long to do. It's not going to be take very long to fix. But if we don't do something about these two right now, we are going to be in a world of hurt. And we're talking about Kalamazoo and Calhoun County. Motion made by Commissioner Witches. Is there and then second made by Commissioner Lett? Is there any discussion or debate on the actual motion? Vice Chair Zatello. Could he delineate exactly what he's proposing deleting in his plan? Commissioner Witches, please. Sure. So what I'm what I'm trying to do is take the district that we drew that is currently in front of us that shows Lenaway and Monroe County, make that district just in total. Lenaway and Monroe County, we're there in population alone for that particular part. And then erase everything that we did in Southwest Michigan in the counties of Branch, St. Joseph, Cass, Berrien, Van Buren, Barrie, Kalamazoo, and Calhoun. So the entire Southeastern area, or sorry, Southwestern area. Vice Chair Zatella, please. Can't we just create a clone plan and have one that is kept the way it is and the other that potentially does what Dustin wants, assuming he agrees or assuming the commission agrees with that? Can, can you please weigh in? At this point right now, that what you're looking at is a copy of where we finished yesterday. Okay. So it, this would be today's starting point. It's already been cloned. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Rothhorn, thank you for extending that. <laughs> I I think I'm um I don't think we need to erase as much as we just need to start. And I think what I'm what I'm remembering, I'm looking at this, these drafts um uh, as as drafts. Like we once we start draft starting in, in, in Wayne County, um and we're gonna yeah, we're gonna have to make some adjustments. I guess what I mean is I I'm I'm not against doing what you're suggesting, Commissioner Witches, but it's it's just it feels like we don't have to delete first. We could just start drawing with our new business, if you will, and then adjusting and then sort of like shifting it because of this this VRA, because of the COI, because of the stuff that we're doing in Detroit. It feels like it it's going to impact it, and I think we're gonna we don't have to delete it. Um, I hear what you're saying, the concern that you have around the Kalamazoo Battle Creek area, but there's yeah the, the likelihood that we shift everything is scary for me, but. I guess it's it's also possible while we're doing the new the new business, if you will. And Commissioner Orton. So um, I agree that maybe we just put a pin in this and then work in the Detroit area. Um, I think maybe what uh, Commissioner Witch is is seeing is what I saw last night when I worked on the Kalamazoo. Battle Creek area, we are painted ourselves into a corner which cannot be fixed without changing some other things that we just did. So we will have to rework that. And I think maybe we've learned something as we've gone along. So it'll be faster and better the next time when we fix it. Okay, Commissioner. So there's a motion on the floor. Um, let's just um, voice our opinions in the vote at this point. And I have a request for a roll call vote. Is that possible? Can I get Ms. Sarah Reinhardt? Absolutely, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioners, uh, please indicate your support of the motion with a yes or no. Um, Commissioner Witches, could I get you to restate the motion, please? Um, I got to think again. So the motion is to rework 
district that we have right now so that Lenaway and Monroe County are together in whole and erase everything that we did yesterday in the Southwest region of Michigan. Thank you. Um, once more, commissioners, please indicate your support of the motion with a yes or a no. I will call on commissioners in alphabetical order, starting with Cynthia Orton. Can I ask a question? <laughs> I'm still not clear. I'm not comfortable with the word erase. Can this just be a copy? We Re still keep oh. what we did as well. Okay, well, what I mean by that is remove them on a, on a, on a copy that we make and start with just Lenaway and Monroe County and then take everything out on the copy that we make. Then I vote yes. I have a question. Are you talking about taking out District 29, 26, 20? and removing that part in Hillsdale and Branch County that are currently in 28? Let me go over it again. Madam Chair. General Counsel. I, I think I think what I what I see unfolding, and this is why <clears throat> part the mapping process doesn't include formal motions during this. Um, I think what the commission has been doing is is going back and reworking and and has been very clear um, that the lines, the the ones that are currently drafted and and how they're going to be adjusted moving forward with additional data and analysis. I, I and I think one of the commissioners had already suggested like cloning this and then reworking it as part of the turn is what it, as part of the rotating turns is is what um commissioners have have been doing pursuant to the mapping process so and i feel just based on the commissioner's questions while prior to the vote being well the vote i guess started we have one one vote logged but but that's what i'm sensing is that this is again going to turn into an iterative process of how things are wanting to be shifted at this time, recognizing, of course, they they will most likely shift again in the future, but but at this time, so so I guess just the clarity again on on proceeding in 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 this fashion, as I understand it, to rework the entire lower portion of the, of the state. Um, as as again an alternate draft is 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 unless I'm hearing it incorrectly. Okay, let's do this then. On the same motion, this is what I would recommend that we do. Make a copy. Erase District 26. Make a new District 26 with just with just uh, Lenaway and Monroe County and move on. Keep everything there. We're just going to come back to it anyway. So just to clarify, you're now only talking about deleting District 26 and what? Cool. The yellow or the blue? Whichever one that is currently in front of our us right now that includes Lenaway, Monroe, and parts of Hillsdale, the yellow one right there. That's 28. Okay, 28. All right, get rid of 28, rework 28 to make it full or fully contain Lenaway and Monroe County and move on. Well, that's a different motion. You want to reach yeah, that motion? And, and again, and Madam Chair. Take a breath. Yes, General Counsel. Yeah, again, and, and, and again, and I and I certainly respect and acknowledge Commissioner Witches's frustration. Um, where I see the commission right now in the agenda is unfinished business, looking back over the work that was uh, that was previously done. Uh, unfinished business, complete any unfinished business from the previous meeting. So what I hear uh, uh, Commissioner Witches wanting to do is to is to start an alternate draft and propose changes to that draft for again the iterative process of the commission's work to continue. Uh, and and I guess or, or maybe if if he and I wanted to talk offline real quick. I, I don't understand the 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 moving this as a motion at this time um, when 
it can just be cloned and done as an alternate draft. May I speak? Um, yes, Ken, and then if general counsel or someone could please provide how it's best for us to proceed in productivity, that would be wonderful. This is just an observation here, but this is a clone. We can delete the whole thing. We can modify one or two districts and move along. Whatever a commissioner would like, very much like we've been doing for days, I think. The next person up. That's all. Commissioner Lett, please. I propose to amend the motion. Um, what um, Commissioner Witches uh, is trying to accomplish is to complete Monroe County out to the east. That will then lock out Wayne County coming down in there. Leave the rest as it is. That's going to throw 28 over, but we'll be able to come back to that and make any necessary adjustments. I will defer to general counsel Pastula on this, but I believe because the vote on the initial motion has already begun, um, the motion cannot be amended at this point. That is correct. Uh, I'll just jump right in, Madam Chair, pardon me. Um, that is correct. The motion has our excuse me, the, the voting has already started on the motion as it was expressed, which was to move Monroe and Lenaway into one district and remove all the work in the Southwest district that was done yesterday to start fresh in that regard. And again, I would highlight that according to the mapping process, the commission does not vote on individual lines until you're voting on the draft plans. Um, for publication for the uh, for the public and and to move the process forward, the reason being so is is again what we have now is is individual votes on individual lines, and if the commission um, begins that practice, then if you look at the work that you've engaged in to date, having to capture votes on all of those lines uh, would be very cumbersome for the commission's work moving forward. So, so again, I, I, I acknowledge and respect Commissioner Witches wanting to make those modifications on the right side of this map and then carry through uh, that proposal. And, and in order to do that, no motions are required. Um, Mr. Uh, Stagall has already indicated that this is a clone map. And since we're in the unfinished business of the portion of the agenda, the commission can just begin doing, uh, Commissioner Witches can begin to make those suggestions since he was recognized by the chair. Uh, that was a very, very long discussion. I apologize uh, to a very short question to Ms. Reinhardt's question that the motion cannot be amended. Voting has started. Uh, Commissioner Orton has cast her vote and uh, I believe the, sec the, the MDUS staff was on Commissioner Lett. Um. Commissioner Rothhorn, actually. Is on um, the next vote? Yes. No. Rebecca Satella? No. Janice Bellet. Yes. Richard Weiss? No. Dustin Witches? Well, I don't want to make anything more difficult later on, so I guess I'll say no now. Doug Clark. Yes. Anthony Ede. I, I agree with, with the change, but I don't think this is the appropriate way to go about it, so I'm going to say no. Brittany Kellum. No. Rhonda Lang. No. Steve Lett. Yes. By a vote of four yes to seven no, the motion does not carry. Thank you, commissioners. Um, at this time, we'll proceed with um, the existing map that we've already been working on, and we can take a look to see if there's anything that. Commissioner Lett. Well, since we are. Uh evidently accepting our general counsel's no offense uh, explanation on how to move forward. 
uh, then I think the commission can at this time decide if it wants to go back, regardless of where we were supposed to be going, and take a look at Monroe and see if we want to make some changes in those areas now. Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Yes, according to the mapping uh, process document adopted by the commission, it would be completely appropriate uh, for Commissioner Witches to move forward on the cloned map and undertake the, the changes that, uh, that he was discussing. Thank you, General Counsel. Um, Vice Chair Zatella. But again, why are we doing that while well, Mr. Um, Adelson. Adelson is here and we have him at our um, at our access and use. I mean, the we we didn't map into Metro Detroit and Saginaw the last two days because we were waiting for him to arrive, and now he is here. So why wouldn't we take advantage of our expert rather than spend three hours? I mean, we've already spent twenty minutes almost talking about this. Why would we waste our time that we have with him so that we end up next week not having him here on a particular day because he has other obligations and then and then we're not going to have him here when we need him? It just it it just seems kind of silly to me. We know we can come back and we work these areas. There's just no need to do it right now. Okay, commissioners, um, we've had a vote. We can move forward if that is okay with the will. And of course, we know that we can go back and make um, changes as we have been and. You also have the privilege to do what you like on your turn. Um, so at this point, I think we left off with Commissioner. Hold on one second. Before we jump into that, is we have a discussion of meeting times. So is it better, do we think, to get that out of the way um, before we completely lean into our discussion of mapping? I didn't hear what you said because your mask is muffling your voice. If you could repeat that, please. Absolutely, Commissioner Lett. I said that would it be best to cover the discussion of meeting times first before we move into mapping because that is something that's on the agenda okay well we can just start the mapping <laughs> i receive notes and i i'm just it's the will of the commission so just know that that's also something that we need to do we left off with commissioner rothhorn i think the next commissioner to map was vice chair zatella if i'm going in alphabetical order Okay, so you're starting with me? Yes. All right. Um, and we are still on the Senate. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. So. 20, we left, 21 is not a complete district. If you notice, it's a little over a half, a well, less than half a district. This area right here. Which color? Just give me the color. 21. 21. Where, okay. where my cursor is, that's just a partial district we just yeah i was i was actually going to go over to to detroit honestly because i feel like that's where we have the expert who is here to assist us and i would i would like him to assist us in these areas commissioner clark yeah could, could i make a suggestion before you start sure that one area in monroe county uh that would be east of I, uh, east i-75 uh -huh. why don't we just make it a dummy district so that we don't move because it's a controversial point at this time so don't, we don't map anything into it and and then discuss it afterwards i i don't even need to go anywhere down there to make a senate district so i am not worried about that at all. All right. <laughs> like that's not even a glimmer in my eye okay sounds good there's so much other population in the Metro Detroit area that I don't even need to think about Monroe right now. All right, I am gonna take my mask off so people can hear me better. All right, so let's zoom into Detroit area a little bit where Wayne County specifically. I just wanna look at something I did. So just to start, um, I want you to go to, I think it would be the township level. And I want you to select Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Taylor, and put them into one district. 
Oops. What was the third one? Uh, Taylor, which is just south of there. And we'll start with district number. What, shall we start with one in this area? Uh, uh, yeah, I think that probably makes sense. And go up because the everything else is the high end numbers. Okay. Commissioner Let. Why are we now changing numbering systems from what we've been doing? We got in a whole lot of trouble last time we did that. No, the only districts that are numbered are the ones that have been completed. When we started out, there was districts one through eight. Well, they've been renumbered 38 sure. down through 35. Mm -hmm. I just thought starting at one in this area would keep it from intruding on 20 and 21 and those areas that have yet to be assigned. My suggestion is we keep numbering the way we've been doing and whatever comes up, it's, what will we be up to, 2019? 21's partially done. So I guess 20. it would be, 20 has already been done, so it would be 19. 19. But when you go to do the other districts, the numbers will be out of sequence. Commissioner Clark and then Commissioner Rothhorn, please. Thank you, Kent, for um, supporting yeah, that this question. question is directed toward Rebecca. Um, is your objective in, in this district to get the Arab American population uh, in the one Senate district? Somewhat, yes. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so I think we are how how far under? I'm sorry, MC, did you have a comment too? I didn't mean to talk over you. It, it was that's okay. I was it was only that um Commissioner Lett, because I think the one is appropriate because we're we're trying to reference the old maps and the the in the Detroit area is where the one, two, three, four. So it's it's just looking at the the way that we try to get well, actually we can have it renumbered. I I withdraw. Never mind, never mind. I don't have a preference one way or another. I don't really care. Whatever, whatever works. Whatever, whatever you think makes the most sense, guys. I don't care. It, it is absolutely up to the commissioners. So if we went with, I think you said nineteen is next. We just have to renumber them at the end, right? I like the renumbering at the end. I, yeah, that just makes more sense. We can just keep going with the nineteen. Okay. Yeah. So let's just keep it nineteen then. And Vice Chair Zatella, you're under, it uh, looks like 28,516. Okay, so- well, she, He just renumbered it to 19, so yeah. sorry. That's okay, no worries. So I wanna go up into Redford. Yep. Continue, Redford. Yep. And so we're going to go up to five mile. Like we can't take all of Redford. It's too big. The northern part. Um, yeah, we don't want to go all the way up to eight mile. We just want to go up to five mile. That should get us pretty close. On the sun, uh, what area? Yeah. Um, can I walk over and show you? It might be easier. Yes, yeah, sure. You're welcome to it. So if you follow this down, come here and go across, that's okay. five miles. So, so take off that part. Yes, no problem. So this little divot out, that's Parkland. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay, and what is that population wise? 49.02 percent okay. i'm gonna leave that so uh for commissioner or for sarah for department of state um, my thought process on this district is i am trying to cre create and preserve the communities of interest that are arab americans that are located in dearborn dearborn heights and the southern part of redford township so trying to put them all into one district Commissioner E. So I think I think this is this is great, but I think we can make it a little better by making some small changes. And I don't know if taking full uh, townships 
I think we're going to have to zoom in and go and look at it at a deeper level than townships to really get this area right. For example, part of Inkstrick Township to the east of Inkster Road, if we zoom in on that, that can get us a lot of population. And there are a lot of air, a lot of people of Middle Eastern descent. Um, we, we zoom in more like to that road. It, it's kind of weird. It's that black line that the, uh, that the district currently splits. If we take that line down through Inkster Road and get that part of, um, of Inkster Township in with this district, I think that would be a little better. Vice Chair Zatella, please. Thank you, Commissioner E. Having grown up in that area um, and knowing the history of animosity between Inkster and Dearborn in particular, I would be very uncomfortable lumping Inkster in with Dearborn. Um, there's a long history of animosity between those two communities. Inkster is primarily African-American. Um, and um, there's a long history of parks policy from Dearborn about keeping African-Americans out of their parks by requiring ID requirements and residency requirements. And I just think ignoring that history and putting those groups together is diluting that African-American vote there. And, and frankly, in a way that is painful for the people who are in Inkster. So I just don't think that's a great idea. Um, this is Commissioner Kellum. I would just echo really quickly that um, the the racial tension between adding Inkster into that area. So that's just something to be mindful of. And did I see Commissioner Rothorn's hand? No. Commissioner Clark. Yeah, I, what I'd like to point out, we heard some people comment that the Arab American community is more densely populated to the west of uh, Southfield Freeway in the Dearborn area. And so I, I think that overflow, and, and I'm that overflow into this area that Anthony suggested um, from Dearborn might be appropriate, um, but I, I have no idea on, on the tensions between the two communities. Um, I share the tele, please. Yeah, so the concentrations of Arabs in Dearborn historically was on the eastern side, bordering Detroit, um, East Dearborn. And certain neighborhoods within Detroit as well, where there are high African or high um, Arab American populations as well. The side that you're talking about is West Dearborn and then is bordered by Dearborn Heights. So that little strip that comes down is actually Dearborn Heights. So that's not Dearborn at all that you're seeing. And that is far removed from Southfield Freeway. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. Thank you, Commissioner Zatella. Commissioner E, please. Well, I'd also suggest, you know, instead of having Taylor along with this district moving, I agree with what you just said about the population being more eastbound, but I think it, it goes more further than what we have now as far as uh, the eastbound border being in Dearborn. I think we can go into West Detroit here and maybe take out some of Taylor, take out some of, uh, of Redford Township, which is, which is completely different. And I think, you know, while doing this, um, Mr. Adelson pointed this out, but we had, we've had some very good communities of interest maps that include West Detroit um, along with this, with this district that you're trying to draw. Um, it is ID number W1530 by Miriam Aknan. Um, she has a couple really good comments, actually, that I suggest everyone read. She's one of the community organizers with Access Clinic, and, uh, you know, they work with this population every single day. She submitted a map along with a very powerful letter titled A Letter from an Arab American, and also maps um, for the Access and APIA uh, communities in Hamtramck and Detroit. And the, the ones for the Dearborn Detroit area go further into West Detroit than what we have here and do not include uh, Redford or Taylor. So I think we should at least examine if we can do something like that. I'm not sure if the population matches up with taking out those cities, but I think it's something we should examine. Okay, I would be okay with moving somewhat into Detroit and pulling out Taylor but um, that's gonna be a precinct by precinct draw. 
because you're not going to be able to just take whole areas. Commissioner Rothhorn, please. I was just thinking if, if we could get, um, so because we're working with Arab Americans and because we're working with census data, I wonder if we can sort of try to get population. Is there some way to tease this out, Mr. Adelson? I can try to sort of get numbers to sort of corroborate what we're, what we think we're doing on the map. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that that's a great point, as you know, and I think we, uh, Mr. Brescia talked about this at the beginning, the census does not have a uh, tab or a unique uh, description for people of Middle Eastern or Arab descent. So he had suggested, and I concur, looking at additional sources of information like the American Community Survey that does break out that population by race. Now that's not a um, the current 2020 census data, but this is an example of a population that is covered by the Voting Rights Act that is not defined as a specific race in the census data, where there have been specific um, public comments referencing this community, that's important as you all are doing to look at it and make the considerations that you are, but getting data and information beyond the 2020 census data, because that just will not separate out uh, Arab Americans or people of Middle Eastern ancestry. Does that, does that make sense? So what I'm hearing you say is that we really need to use the COI data if we're going to try to draw and reference it, that we can't necessarily, right? excuse me, Air, the American Community Survey, but that's our homework, right? We'd have to bring that in as homework. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. As a professor, I'm loath to use the word homework, so I'm not going to. Um, but I do think that this is goes beyond just looking at like the information at the bottom of the screen about the 2020 census, because it's just not there. You're, you're, you benefit, and I had... Um, read this these comments last week, so, someone who actually defined a geographic area. And Mr. Brace had said early in the process that it would be difficult to district with a particular population in mind that is not separated out as a distinct race, like Native Americans, for example, because of the census decision-making. So yes, if the public comment the ACS and then marrying that with the 2020 census data, I think that's a good idea. And keeping in mind that these particular comments are just, they have excellent descriptions of the community. And I'm thinking about it from a geographic standpoint in a way that would, would help you as you move forward to consider your next steps that at least it gives you a defined area. That doesn't always happen typically with community of interest or public comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adelson. Um, Vice Chair Zatella. Yeah, I'm just looking at some numbers. So I'm just trying to tease out like what, what the uh, population of Taylor is compared to the area of Warrendale, um, which is where I would grab if I were to go into Detroit, I'd go up to Warren Avenue, which is a primarily Arab American neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. and that only has 24,000 people versus Taylor, which is 63, um, seconds. My Autobahn edge is freezing on me here. So give me a second. And then... Yeah, so the whole of Redford is 49,000. So we could take out part of Redford and replace it with Warrendale. So if you take Redford back down to the Dearborn city limits and pull up into Detroit, north of where that little kind of carve out area is right now. Uh, this area or whoop, not what I want. Yep, so there, that's Dearborn that you have right now. So you see the line going across where there's that little kind of Carve out this area go, yep, here, right across there. Is this correct area? Yes. Yes. Take this area. Yep. So that's Warren Avenue right along there. I have to do an undo on that. I did the whole township. Yeah, I think you're going to have to do blocks. Is that correct? 
Yeah, so add that in. So what does that bring my population to? It's 14,000 short. Yeah, so now I want you to take it up to Tyerman, which is the next major road that runs across there. This road here? Um, I think that's a little too high. Hold on. Oh, that's Joy or something like that. Yeah. Tyerman, it, it bound, it bound. I see it now. Yep. This right here. Yep. So grab Tyerman, grow across to Tyerman. <clears throat> Those were precincts. Should I go back and do blocks? Is that what we want to do? What's the population that's, that's selected? That, that area right there is 10,585 people. So first. select that and then go over a little to the east and grab the rest of it. This precinct, uh, precinct here is 2,287. 2,287. Okay, so add that one in. You're now 0.71% low. Okay. So we can leave it there or we can try to grab a, you know, change it around and do a little on the east side as well. But I think that's, that's a good area. That's, that's the Warren Avenue strip, which is a lot of Arab American restaurants, a lot of Arab American businesses, a high population. Um, but it doesn't quite get into the areas that have been identified for us that the um, Rosedale park area that wants to stay together. So we're not quite getting into that yet. And I don't think we would want to do that. So Commissioner Ede and then Commissioner Clark. So I really like those changes. Um, I might suggest going to, to Joy Road if you want and going over, but I still, I think what we have there for that whole area of Dearborn, Dearborn Heights up to the road that you drew is fine. But I, I still think rather than Taylor being included in this district, there are more Middle Eastern people in the city of Melvindale and in the northern part of Allen Park, and also in the north um, western part of Lincoln Park, west of I-75. Uh, I think that would be better serving the community mm -hmm. rather than Taylor. And I also think, again, we can go a little bit east of the, the city line of Dearborn as well and still be okay. There are a lot of Middle Easterners in Western Detroit as well. I mean, there's, you know, historic mosques over there, as well as, you know, various Islamic associations. And this is all in that geography that Mr. Adelson was just speaking about. I'll, I'll uh, name it again, it's, uh, W1530. And it, it has all of the community centers in the area and includes the city of Melvindale. It includes that northern part of Allen Park, and it, it does not include any of Taylor. So if you'd be willing to do that, I think we'll have a really good district here. So my concern with that is Melvindale and Allen Park wanted to be in Downriver, and they were very clear about that. We received multiple public comments about that. The same thing with Lincoln Park and that Delray neighborhood in Detroit. When we start pulling into that, we had multiple public comments about the Latino community and those neighborhoods wanting to be together, as well as the environmental concerns with River Rouge, Lincoln Park, and Delray. So if we start pulling that into Dearborn, you're diluting those concerns because the people in Dearborn and Dearborn Heights just simply don't have those concerns at all. Neither does Taylor, which was why I was trying to stay out of that area. Um, I think you could still make, I, I agree that is, that is a concern, but you could still make a downriver district out of Delray, River Rouge, Ecorse, uh, and the rest of Lincoln Park and the rest of Allen Park um, and Wyandotte as well. Those are all still downriver communities, even though they don't, uh, we, we would be not including Melvindale as part of that, but all of the rest of them could still make a downriver community. But then you're talking about including Southwest Detroit, which in my um, town halls with people in Downriver, they did not want to be included in Southwest Detroit. They were very clear about that. So I think we've got a lot to balance here. Uh, Mr. Adelson had his hand raised and then Commissioner Orton, please. <clears throat> Excuse me, thank you. I just wanted to make a couple of points that they don't, while they don't necessarily, or they may not necessarily apply here. I wanted to remind the commission that it is, 
legally acceptable, according to the Supreme Court, to underpopulate up to a certain point, certain districts, if Voter Rights Act compliance is at issue. I'm not suggesting that's true here, but just keep that in mind. That's one of the things that we did in Arizona was there was significant racially polarized voting in our analysis, and there was less white crossover voting than there is here. So that is an issue. The You can underpopulate a district if necessary to comply with the Voting Rights Act. And I want to follow up on briefly Commissioner Zatella's point about the balancing. And yes, that can be, that can get complicated. And particularly when you're dealing with people who may or may not uh, coalesce from a voting standpoint, but that is at the heart of when you get into an urban center, often what, what you'll have to do. But I particularly wanted to mention the underpopulating issue. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Orton. So I have two things. First of all, mm -hmm. I think it bears reminding us all that town halls are purely for information. We cannot consider information that was got, that was received at town halls because it was not one of our open meetings. And also we have received many, many Arab American community maps on our portal. I think it would be wise to look at that and compare with what we're drawing before we say that we are final final draft. Um, I respect those opinions. I will also say, um, even though I'm a native uh, Detroiter, I'm familiar with this area. And if you cut too far into Melvindale and Allen Park, the unique thing about the Detroit area is the neighborhoods and the communities change drastically, mm -hmm. like immediately. Mm -hmm. So your neighbor or your community center here, where in the suburbs or other areas that we've worked um, worked with, they kind of bleed in seamlessly. It's a direct difference of culture. So I would just caution um, even having family that grows up in the Down River area. It's a very tight and sincere community. So it's not just a line that we're simply looking at. Those are my tidbits. Commissioner Clark. Commissioner Clark, I'm so sorry. Your hand is hidden behind the screen. It's directly in front of my face. No. So you have to give me like an elementary yeah, no, school. No, no, no. <laughs> from, from what I know of the area, what we what you just did, Rebecca, on the northern part of this is really appropriate. Um, I, I, I'm not familiar with the south, so I'd have to uh, depend on you and Brittany and, and Anthony to to direct us there. But the one comment I wanted to make, we when we went north, we started eating into the city of Detroit mm -hmm. in certain Clark. areas. And my my thoughts when we do that is that we keep the individual communities in Detroit together because that seemed to be a big focus when we talked to the people in Detroit. And I think we got a map the other day in the, showing where those what those were. Um, so I wouldn't want to start splitting up those communities because that appeared to me, and Brittany could help me with this, to be very, a very sensitive and a very common comment that we got from, from the individual communities in the Detroit area. Commissioner Clark, say that last part again. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, I, um, I thought that... Um, the comments that I heard when we had the, the, the two um, public hearings in Detroit, where people always talked about their communities, you know, how Detroit split up into maybe 20 different communities. I wouldn't want to see those split up when we do the districts. I'd want to keep those whole. Uh, and that may be a difficult thing to do. <laughs> um, yeah, that's why I just said it's food for, food for thought. Like uh, Wyandotte, Southgate, Allen Park, Lincoln Park, Melvindale, River Rouge, they, there's like a, a, a down river pride there. Yeah. Um, Just a strong. quick reminder for commissioners, as you're speaking, make sure you're speaking directly into the microphone. I know it's uncomfortable when you're talking to someone who's seated behind you, but if you turn your head around, then the viewing audience cannot hear you. Thank you. Yeah, so I would just point out that that northern edge that I drew, if you go back to our public comment and the maps that were submitted, it follows it exactly, which I didn't even look at that map, but I drew it because I grew up there and I know it very well. So I could draw the line without looking at what was submitted. So it literally matches what's on our public comment portal about the Arab American community on the north end. 
Commissioner Rothorn and then Commissioner E, please. I'm, I'm just thinking about process. It, it feels good, like it's a good start. And mm -hmm. I think we've got to look at community, American Community Survey, <clears throat> right? Sort of maybe do some homework after after this and just sort of test it out. But I, I like the idea that we've got some good rationale. It feels good to me, like we've had a good back and forth. I like the idea of saying, okay, we'll, we'll stick with this. Um, maybe another adjustment, I'm not suggesting we have to, but I just like the idea of trying a second district and right in the, in a third and then trying, right. Cause we're going to have to adjust everything, but it just feels like we've got a good start here. And I like the rationale in the, in the back and forth it feels collaborative. And I would also add too, I mean, I definitely think we could go a little bit into Southwest Detroit a bit without trying to cut into Delray. I don't know about going down into Melvindale. I think that's going to be a problem. Um, but the problem with that is that's not going to allow us to take out Taylor. So that means we're gonna to have to grab population somewhere else, which is either go up into Redford, which the Northern parts or Southern parts of Redford are very similar to the Northern parts of Dillon Heights, which is why I went that way in the first place. Um, but there's gonna to have to be a balance somewhere if we choose to do that, um, because we just don't have the population unless you go significantly into Detroit. And then um, I don't really think that's the best. I don't think that's representative either. <clears throat> Okay, Commissioner E, and then I propose that we move on because I think Vice Chair Zatella did give her justifications a while ago. Well, I agree. The northern part of this district is is great. I think you drew it very well. I would, we could keep it as that. But the problem here really is Taylor, and like we don't need to take out all of Taylor if you don't want to. But but you know, I think just keeping it as whole townships is not the way to go in this area. Let's be clear, we're talking about a community that we just heard from our Voting Rights Act, uh, Act expert is a community that is protected by the Voting Rights Act. So we need to figure out a way how to do this to, to make that uh, take priority here as that's the number one criteria, which is even over communities of interest. So I would say you know, a good, a good compromise, a good start would be to at least uh, maybe zoom in on Taylor, take out the bottom half of it, see if we can put some of the Western part of Detroit in there uh, as the, you know, the people that have submitted a comment to us have said, you know, I think we need to, we just need to zoom in more, right? And, and look, you know, really, uh, really look at this. The, the majority of Arab Americans live in Dearborn and Dearborn Heights. <clears throat> yes, so yes, we could take out yes. Taylor, which is about, I think, 60,000 people, but that's not going to change the fact that the concentration of Arab Americans is in Dearborn and Dearborn Heights and that, that northern part of or southwest Detroit bordering Dearborn. So we've already captured that population. So I don't think including Taylor is somehow creating a voting rights issue because we've captured the community already. We're just trying to make up population. Um, so, I mean, I, I think Inkster is a terrible idea. So we're going to cross off Inkster. And then, I mean, we could potentially go into Garden City a little bit. But again, you're, you're going into areas that are predominantly white to balance out a district. And that's going to be true wherever you go around there. Well, that there, There's going to be a different, slightly different demographic because we're trying to hit a Senate population. I'd also just um, add a continued gentle reminder that when we're taking turns, um, it is that person's turn to work with the map. And even though it's collaborative, um, I, would, I would caution us to kind of read the room if the person is making a decision and that's the decision that they're wanting to make. Maybe we press for a change at a, at a later date. But um, Commissioner Ede, you are welcome to continue the compromise because I understand what you're saying. But I would just echo, I don't really see just knowing also like the Romulus area, Southgate, I don't see another place to necessarily put Taylor um that would make sense well what would make sense to me is going into western detroit and taking the parts of it that are uh to the left of i-94 up until we get to dearborn i understand it doesn't seem like um vice chair zatella is willing to make that change on her turn yeah i would just say my concern with that is is you're bleeding into the apac community because you're starting to get onto that border of Hamtramck by doing that, and then also the Latinx community. So it's not like I didn't consider those things. I just think this is probably the best, the best map given the complex 
demands of COIs that we received in this area. And, you know, I, the only place I think we could go other than this is to drop Taylor and put in Garden City and Redford. And, you know, maybe a few neighborhoods on the, the Southwest side of Detroit. But again, I wouldn't go down to Delray at all because those people want to be with other people who have the, the River Rouge complex environmental concerns, which are significant in that area. Commissioner Lang, please. I'll just be quick. I don't know a lot about this area, but I do know Rebecca in the meetings has told us the extensive amount of homework she's been doing. So I appreciate that. And I would just put out there that if a commissioner is not happy with the maps that another commissioner chose to um, do, we have in the past had commissioners come back and change districts that have been drawn so on their turn. So I think I'm saying, Brittany, let's kind of what you said, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Lay. Um, Commissioner Litt. Uh, I, is there a reason that we have to have two teeth at the very northern line? To what? I think he's calling Teeth. Teeth. It's just a precinct. That's the precinct boundary. When he selected the precinct, it pulls out that one little block. Can we get, can we smooth that out? Sure. What streets are those? So that the guy that's in that one block isn't going to come back and say, how come I'm in that one block? <laughs> Commissioner Zatella? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just asking, is this, let me know what you want to change when. I mean, yeah, we can pull that, that line across. I'm fine with that. It, it's just going into a different precinct. So it's just making it more complicated for the, but let's just leave it. And we can come back and hanky with it later if we want to. So. Okay. I believe the next commissioner is commissioner. Um, Vallette. Um, I'm going to go to the west, I think. West Detroit or West Michigan? West, West Michigan. <laughs> Can you be more specific? No, now? actually, I want to go wet north, northwest. Can you back up so I can see what's available? Thank you. At this moment, uh, this is a, was a copy of yesterday's work plan. The unassigned areas is 21 is only 40% of the district. This white area is unassigned. And then as previously been mentioned, you know, the Eastern East coast of Monroe or the areas of the state that have not been completed. Commissioners as a tell of didn't, didn't we have another like proposed map that we had done with Kalamazoo and Battle Creek so, too. Why is it that? Yes, I can turn it on right now. Oh, well then I don't want to do that. Nope, can I go to Oakland County? And can I see the townships? So I'm going to do my township, Highland Township, put it with Milford. Highland. Highland, yes. In this far corner right here. I'm sorry, what did you say? The far corner, Highland. All of Highland. Okay. And Mil and Milford. And okay, we're 18. <clears throat> Um, can we do White Lake? Um, Commerce. Um, can we do um, the city of White Lake and, and Wixom? Excuse me? White, Wild Lake and Wixom.
that's about half a district so far. Okay. Um, Waterford. You need 60,000 more people. South Lyon and Lyon. Commissioner Clark. Yeah, one of the things you might consider is Pontiac. It is 61,000 people. Um, I think it fits in good with this as it does with any of the other surrounding townships commissioner witches yeah, i would i would agree because i would imagine south lion um and would would be with novi which would make more sense well okay but let's do south lion and lion You need 24,000 more people, 25,000 to reach the ideal deviation. Janice, there was a comment um, about the Clarkston and I see the village of Clarkston. Um, we got that comment twice. Do you know about Clarkston? Would Clarkston sort of fit in with this sort of map that you're, like this sort of the, the general area? Independence there is 36,000. Commissioner Clark. Yeah, that's close to where I live. Clarkson's more associated with Lake Orion, um, Auburn Hills, Rochester Hills. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner E, please. Why, why not go um, a little north to fill up the rest of northern Oakland County? Okay. I mean, I, I see, you know, Pontiac being pretty similar to, to Waterford uh, and White Lake and Commerce being extremely associated with Orchard Lake mm -hmm. West and West Bloomfield um, and, and Wixom and Wild Lake being a lot more with, with Novi than with all the way up to Highland. So you know, it might may, it might be better to go to those northern uh, parts of the of the county. So we're not splitting those communities up. So are you suggesting taking out Lyon and South Lyon? Uh, well, really, mainly Commerce, taking Commerce out, um, and possibly Waterford. Um, you know, I don't really know. Well, definitely Commerce. <laughs> but okay. After that, Let, you can well, decide. let's try to remove Waterford and Commerce. And then are you suggesting maybe I take Novi? No, I'm suggesting you go north to Northern Oakland County to like where Springfield, Springfield and Independence Township are and, and that whole area. Excuse me, and uh, joining Commerce is Wald Lake, Unassign and Wixom. What do you wanna do with these? Yes, unassign them. Commissioner Clark. Yeah, let, let me ask Anthony this. So I, uh, I see, because you've lived up there in that general area before. I see, I see Pontiac, Waterford, and White Lake, all that M59 corridor going to the west and, and associated with each other. And I also see if you go a little south, Kego Harbor and Sylvan Lake the same way. <laughs> Can I respond, Madam Chair? Oh, sure. Um, I definitely agree with Pontiac, Waterford, and White Lake. Um, however, Kego Harbor and Sylvan Lake should be with Orchard Lake and West Bloomfield and whatever we district we make out of those more mm -hmm. suburban districts. Uh, that's what we've, that's all we heard at our no-buy hearing. Um, I mean, I went to school, I, I live in Orchard Lake, but I went to school in the West Bloomfield School District where we had kids from Sylvan Lake Kego Harbor, Orchard Lake, West Bloomfield, Farmington Hills, Novi, Bloomfield, Royal Oak, that whole area. So, but I definitely agree with your comments on M59 going through Pontiac, 
Auburn Hills, Waterford, White Lake area. Commissioner Clark. But to get to Orchard Lake from the north, Orchard Lake Road runs just south through Pontiac. And yeah, and, and hooks into, into Keogh Harbor and Sylvan Lake as well. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll... Uh, well, let's take think Waterford. your opinions. Okay, fine. Let's take Waterford. You still need a proxy. This should be eight. I'm sorry, I read these and that numbered wrong. <laughs> Okay, 18 is now 34,000 or 34% below ideal. Ninety-two thousand people are needed. Huh. Let's take commerce back in. Commerce. In the smaller communities. Yeah, go ahead and I mean this is back I'm back where I was. Yes, ma'am. Twenty four thousand eight hundred ninety eight people below ideal. Commissioner Rothor. Janice, I wonder because Oakland County is a pretty diverse county. I wonder if you want to put on that layer of, um, you know, that with the dots that allows you to see like the racial composition of the, you know, the areas just to help you with the questions at the at the end. That's all I'm thinking about. Okay. We're looking at uh, the, the dots represent uh, black population greater than 12% of the total population. I'll drop that down to 10% just to get a nice even number. At this point, we can click on the dots. And that's not what I meant to do. Okay, now. You suggested that I put Pontiac in there and take out Commerce and Wild Lake and Wixom. Hmm? So put Pontiac in. And take out Commerce. And Wall Lake and Wixom. You're now thirty per thirty thousand people below ideal. Take Lake and Angulus. Commissioner Clark, please. One of the things you might consider is um, putting Auburn Hills with Pontiac. That's I think that'd be appropriate. If you go any further east, it, I, I don't think it works. Or even north toward Clarkston, Lake Orion, I don't think it works. Auburn Hills, I think it may. And, and that's what I was thinking. Put Auburn Hills in. Commissioner Witches. Um, I I still don't believe that South Lyon sh and South Lyon, uh, sorry, Lyon Township and South Lyon should be included in, in this particular configuration. Okay, so um, and what you think they're more like Novi? They would go yes, closer to Novi than anything Auburn Hills Pontiac related. Oh, okay, then we'll take Lyon and South Lyon out.
And Janice, I'm just thinking about helping you with the with the questions at the end. I think there is what, what Commissioner Witches is uh, is suggesting. I, I think there's an Asian American population that we might want to try to understand in the in the Novi area. Could you repeat that? The one of the reasons I don't know that Lions and Novi are as similar in terms of demographics, but I do understand that there is a significant population, Asian American population in the Novi area. And then um, it, that's that's a reason to sort of um, try to understand as you're drawing the district, again, demographically and racially, just trying to understand it. Um, it's a reason to unselect Lion because it may actually help. Okay. So can we put Commerce back in? Including Wixom and Wild Lake? Um, yeah, for now. You're now 26,338 persons high. Take Wixom out. Now you are now 3.45% high or 9,145 people. Commissioner Witches. I might just defer this back to you, uh, but Wald Lake, would that be more associated with Highland and Milford or would you believe that would be more associated with Novi? Um. Novi, maybe I was. Yeah, that's that's not, my yeah. my thought. Novi, so I would take Wald Lake out and see if there's like a smaller precinct in maybe okay. northwest West Bloomfield. Okay, we'll take Wald Lake out. That should give you a good deep, uh, reasonable deviation number. You're at point seven one percent. Okay, I'll leave it at that. One eight nine five. Mr. Adelson, I, please. I, excuse me. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just wanted to ask. I, I the dots that are on the map, that's the, the black population. Yeah. Since Oakland County is one of the counties that Dr. Hanley analyzed and determined there's racially polarized voting, I think we need to have the dots for I guess you, there's also the Asian and Hispanic population. So I would recommend that those are included too, because we're starting to get into an area that's mm -hmm. impacted by the Voting Rights Act and by her work. Thank you. I also had a question for the commission. I'm not sure. Are, are we thinking that this is a good place for Pontiac, given their concerns to be with the other communities that just want to hear other commissioners thought? I, and Commissioner Vallette, I completely understand why you included it. I was just thinking of the population there. Um, I, who has a hand? Commissioner Clark. Yeah, I mean, I live relatively close to Pontiac within 10 miles. Um, it's like it's an island out yeah, there of, of minorities, and it's surrounded by uh, a heavy white population. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's any good answer to to where yeah, that's okay. where put it. Actually, I think the answer we've got here is probably the best. Okay. Of the alternatives, it was an in solidarity question, so I was just making sure that I wasn't the only person. No, that no, no, that, I, so understand, I, just I understand. Need to because hear. if you okay. look at the current maps, as I recall, I have to do it from my head. Uh, Pontiac is associated with Detroit. They ran a, a and I, I can't remember which, whether it was Senate or Congress or whatever, but but they ran a s small area up to Pontiac to include it. And that, I don't think it's the correct thing to do, but um, I, I, the options that I see as I visualize this, I think this is the best, um, but I, I really appreciate uh um, Bruce's comments about uh, adding the others, the Asians in. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. Commissioner E, please. Well, I, I certainly think that, you know, Pontiac should be with a district with Auburn Hills and Waterford, maybe White Lake, but maybe not White Lake, but the rest of the three Highland, Milford and Commerce, um, I, I don't really think should be there. I, I'm, conf I'm confused at why we didn't go 
into a little bit more of northern like springfield County. that's what i was kind of thinking only because some of the areas that have been selected bleed into areas i think that should be together but that's just my preliminary thought and similar to what commissioner Ead um shared about the school experience and where people are from in that area Commissioner Valletto, I give the floor back to you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I was returning, I was giving you the floor again. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm happy with this. Okay. Um, can you provide your justifications if they need more and then I'll move on. Okay. Well, I, um, I need some help. I don't really, I just know that I live in Highland Township and I know that Highland Milford White Lake is considered like almost the same community. Mm -hmm. um, we go into Waterford um, and I do agree that Pontiac is an island. I do think that it is more affiliated with Auburn Hills and Waterford because I know that sometimes Pontiac and Waterford blend together. You're not really sure if you're in Pontiac or if you're Waterford or Auburn Hills, they kind of blend. Um, what else should I say? Michigan, um, M. Doss, is that okay for justification? Yeah. I have a few more questions, if that's okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I think. <laughs> I was like, this long pause isn't for me. <laughs> um, Commissioner Villette, how did you take communities of interest into account? Uh, the communities of interest. Well, Highland and, and White Lake are kind of a rural and Waterford and Pontiac are more of an urban area. So I thought that they, you know, kind of balanced each other out. Thank you, Commissioner Vallette. Our next commissioner is Commissioner... Of course, Commissioner Clark. <laughs> Bruce, if we left this as it is, is it an issue? Well, I appreciate the, the question. And even though I tell my law students that it depends, is not necessarily dispositive as they move on in their lives, but it does depend. It depends only, it depends mainly in this sense. Without knowing the racial composition of the adjoining areas, and I have an understanding of the anecdotally of what the populations are. If you just took this proposal in isolation, the population looks okay. But whether or not this dilutes population in adjoining areas or whether or not there is sufficient population to create a majority minority district, those are, are other issues. In isolation, I would say, yeah, likely is okay. But without knowing what else you can do, what other possibilities there are, then I would say it by its that it, it likely will be reevaluated. Does that does that make sense? Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Commissioner Weiss, I believe you're next. Thank you, Madam Chair. Of course, I would be inclined to go up into my district. But since I believe we received a lot of comments about the Detroit area and spending more time there, and I am not too familiar with the Detroit area, I would like to pass my turn off to one of the, my next commissioners that have more uh, experience with the Detroit area, because I really don't have that much, <laughs> if that would be all right. It's up to you. Um, I'm sure we're willing to help you, but if you want to pass your turn, that's well within your right. So. Yes, I would like to pass it on to the next commissioner that has uh, more experience in okay. the area. All right, Commissioner Thank Wishes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, uh, I'm going to try and tackle the downriver area. Um, and we're going to start right at the bottom on the border of Monroe, Town, uh, Monroe County. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, the top border of Monroe County, the big squiggly line. Okay. Uh, um, my apologies. Kent, can you provide what the number of the 
district Commissioner Vallette Drew was? 18. Thank you. All right, so if you were to zoom in, we're just gonna take on um, townships here. And that would be Rockwood, Gibraltar, and Flat Rock. <clears throat> Woodhaven and Trenton and Groziel. Brownstown Riverview. Southgate Wyandot. Allen Park, Lincoln Park, E Course. Go, Commissioner Witches, go. <laughs> Melvindale, River Rouge. And then the four little precincts that are right in between Melvindale and River Rouge. Yep, I think there might be two or three of them. That area or less? I believe that's it. Mm -hmm. 5,900. So Commissioner Witches, you might as well start giving your justification. <laughs> uh, my justification is just this, in my opinion, is the downriver area based off of my own personal knowledge, as well as what uh, public comments we have received in regards to the um, well downriver area. Mm -hmm. uh, communities of interest are being... Uh, are going to be held here pretty uh well hold on change my wording this is going to keep all the, the the communities of interest together that identify as being in the down river community i wish to thank um vice chair Sid zatella for including taylor in her district because that was turning out to be a nightmare when i was trying to do <laughs> this particular district so that's that's always uh that was nice and i think that's all i have at this particular point and Commissioner Witchless, how did you take into account reflection of the state's diverse populations when drawing this district? Um, well, just by listening to what individuals were saying about this particular area during our listening tour. And the dots. The dots are helping you with some answers, too, that you could tell. Yeah, and, and the dots. <laughs> Oh goodness! <laughs> Literally, just repeated the dots. And I think Commissioner Weiss has uh, something for you, Commissioner Witches. Commissioner Weiss, you have the floor. Thank you, Commissioner Witches, for bailing me out. <laughs> you are most welcome. Uh, Miss Reinhardt, does that suffice? Can I make a comment? Could you elaborate a little bit on that? <laughs> I'll try. So utilizing the information that is presented by election data services on our screen, which shows population, um, high density population of minorities, taking that and blending it in with what is uh, the downriver area, help me decide at this particular district. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Commissioner Zatella. I'm sorry, I got pulled out of the wrong room and I know I missed part of this conversation, um, but we do have a map from the Latino community that wanted Lincoln Park to be put in with Southwest Detroit. So just something to consider if we're looking at moving lines farther down the road that we did receive a specific community of interest mm -hmm. that pulled out Lincoln Park and pulled it into Delray rather than having it be part of the downriver. Oh, Commissioner Witches, I'm sorry, I was looking down. Just a follow-up question to that. So would you be suggesting that little area that's technically part of Detroit that butts up to uh, Lincoln Park, taking that out 
potentially at a later time when we get to the Delray area in Detroit? I would actually follow the line down to Lincoln Park and pull that bubble of Lincoln Park out and put it in Detroit. But that that would be what I would do. This is your your district, so. Because if you look at the Hispanic community in Lincoln Park, it's quite high. Yeah. And then if you cross into Southwest Detroit, that's where Mexican Town is. That's true. Like I said, they submitted a map specifically that asked that those two groups be kept together. So it would be respecting that community of interest. So which which line do you suggest I follow down? So I'm, I'm not, I see multiple lines. What do you mean, which line do you follow down? Well, you said take the follow, follow the line down to Lincoln Park and take that See how out. there's that, see how Lincoln Park is kind of like a circle? Correct. And there's that little center area that shoots out yep. like a straw coming out of a coconut? Yep. I'd take the straw and the coconut. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the, Put the so, lime and the coconut. <laughs> so the last all section that I had. <laughs> okay, thank you. Someone finished it. We can take, we can take that out. The, the, the section that I just added between Melvindale and River Rouge. And I think we did it on the precinct level. Like that. Yep, and then take out the coconut. There you go, and that way you can put that with Southwest Detroit and Delray. Um, and that, like I said, there was a map submitted with those specific communities together. Well, okay, so but now we're going to be yeah, we're now we're going to be a whole bunch of population short, forty thousand worth. Excuse me, somewhere nineteen um, district nineteen lost some population. Was it this this area right here? Mm -hmm. Yes, that appears to be missing. I don't know how that happened. Let me uh, try to recover this, get back to where we were. Bruce Adelson, please. <laughs> Thank you. Could you, could we add the, the dots for the Hispanic and Asian population, please? Because in, in looking at the the uh, proposed changes that I know we were talking about, um, the um, public comments about the Hispanic community. So getting a real idea of the, the people we're talking about here and really throughout the area, but particularly here would be very, very helpful and necessary. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Witches. Yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking chairperson. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think uh, I know. <laughs> Commissioner Witches' silence is that was a thinking silence. So I was letting him stare and think. And these, the orange bubbles that are on the screen now, are representative of the Latino community. No, sir, that's the black community. You can click here. You can see the numbers is representative. That's 51% that precinct. This dot is smaller, so it's less than 51%. Are there, are there dots for the Latino community? I could look to see what we can set up. Is, is that what you're saying? Please. I think that's what... Um... Mr. Adelson was asking for the Latino and um, Asian population to be reflected as well. I don't believe we can do more than one at a time with this configuration. Um, I, that's something I could look at and study when we have a break or you know, how many we can get loaded up at one time. Okay. So um, now we're looking at the Hispanic population greater than 10%. Um, I believe use a different color just so we don't get confused about. I believe Lincoln Park is twenty five percent Latino. So now looking at okay, this. so now we're now we're splitting them into two different groups if they take that out. So I would add the uh, Lincoln Park and the straw back in. Let me let me uh, look at this thematic mag one more time. It doesn't appear to be behaving as I expected. Yeah, it goes from eight percent to like eleven percent when you add it back in. 
also diluted because it's for the you know, It's not showing the percentages I expected it to. Yes, I, would, I think we have what we are. I would add the uh, I would add Lincoln Park and that jutting area back into it. This may be something that we can do in the house districts. Excuse me, you want to put Lincoln Park back into Link, 17? Yep, Lincoln Park back into 17 and those tiny little precincts at the top that we added, removed and are now adding again. All right, there we go. And I'll be done at this particular point. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Witches. I believe um, the next person is Commissioner Clark. Okay, I um, <clears throat> let's go up toward the Pontiac area. I'm most familiar with that. It's, it's the northern, or, yeah, northern part of Oakland County. Okay, so, yeah. I, I want to take um, Oakland Township, which is, it says Oakland, so it's, yeah, I want to take all Oakland Township. I want to go south and take all Rochester and Rochester Hills. Rochester is an island. It's square mile inside Rochester Hills, so we have no choice. Go south. Choose Troy. Yeah. Troy, yeah. Troy, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah it does. It's, uh, it's got it's Asians on the west side of Troy, which I think is appropriate to include. Um, where am I? You need 68,000. Okay. So let's um, include Birmingham, Bloomfield Hills. In Bloomfield Township, which is surrounds Bloomfield Hills, and yeah, so where are we at? That's going to be close to ideal. 077 percent high, less than one percent high. Yeah, I, I, I think. Uh, let me look at it again. Where, how far north we go? Commissioner Clark, that looks good to me, but this is your turn. <laughs> What's that? I said this is your turn, but it looks very good to me. Yeah, what well, I'm thinking, I'll tell you what's in my mind is Lake Orion and Oxford, but mm. then that would really put us over because, yeah. So I, I think that's more appropriate with Independence Township and I Brandon. Yeah. Okay, I'm good with it. Well, you know what's next. You have to answer your three questions, Commissioner Clark. Oh, I love my questions. Okay. Okay, go ahead and ask, okay. ask me the questions. But, but um, I'm going to call on Commissioner Ede first. Okay. So, so something I would suggest is instead of going west to Bloomfield and Bloomfield Hills and Birmingham, which I think are more associated with West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and Sylvan, we want to consider going right into Sterling Heights. You know, we've heard mm. plenty of times that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Sterling Heights and Troy have things in common, especially with minority communities. Um, and I think, I mean, I think just generally speaking, knowing the areas Troy and Sterling Heights, along with Rochester Hills and Oakland Township, all have quite a lot uh, in common with each other. Um, so you're, you're suggesting taking Bloomfield and Bloomfield Hills out and Bloomfield Township out. Keeping Birmingham in. I would keep Birmingham in. Um, I'm, I, I want to ask uh, Mr. Adelson a question. When we move over to Sterling Heights, I think we're going to get more diversity. Do you, do you feel that we need more diversity in this area? 
And that's a great question. I, I, I think that as you know, I mentioned at the beginning, the um, considerations for diverse population under the third criterion are different yep. than under the Voting Rights Act and the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. So I think that my sense is that you, as you go, as, as far as the third criterion, you, you see what what shaping up as you um, create a district. So I know that that's somewhat ambiguous, that the criterion doesn't have the same, like the preconditions for under Thornburg versus Jingles, it's not as specific. So I think that that's really just going to depend on what the, what your district looks like as it as it evolves as you consider it. Thank you, Commissioner Rathorn, please. And, and Doug, I was going to offer that what, what I heard Commissioner Eve suggest really would help us. The Bangladeshi community also said that they would, right, they, the Sterling Heights, Warren area and Troy. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, what I mean to say is like, I think it's it's sort of answering the questions that the Secretary of State asked us, which is why, you know, how did you take into consideration di diversity? This would be, okay, moving away from West Bloomfield and moving into Sterling Heights is considering the Asian American population and some of the community of interest submissions that we've had. And that's a I mean, I just, it's, a, it's an excellent example of yeah. what we're trying to do. Um, it is, but the Bangladesh people are also down in Warren. So I, I don't know if we want, want to keep them together or not. Well, we can do always do that in the house districts. Okay. So let's take Bloomfield out, Bloomfield Hills out. Vice Chair Zatella. Yeah, I was just going to, um, on that same point, say that the um, Bangladeshi community was more in Warren along specific corridors by 94. Okay. So it's not so much adding to the Bangladeshi community. Although we did receive a lot of comment from APAC about mm -hmm. Rochester and Rochester Hills and the Asian American communities up there, which you already mm -hmm. have included in this district. So just some more food. To okay. Well, if, you, if you leave this, then you have the ability to put more Bangladeshi people together with Sterling Heights and Warren, and then possibly mm -hmm. coming down to, to Highland Park. Yeah. So something to consider. If, if we leave it like it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I understand. Yeah. Then it's almost like they have a Senate district where they will have a majority of the people, probably, or a, a good majority. Or, or a high minority, yeah. I was going to say maybe what you want to look at is the numbers, and I don't know if we have the Asian American numbers um, in that. Well, let's, let's let's look at the numbers. Let's take let's go back over to Sterling Heights, and up at the top is Utica, and Van Dyke runs south from Utica. So, if we could take everything to to the west of, on the Sterling Heights. Yeah, that's that's what I think is Van Dyke. Yeah, where you have your partner split the township of Sterling Heights. Is that what you're saying? West of that, yes. Just wanted to point out, Commissioner Orton, that her hand raised. Thank you, Commissioner Orton. Please, I'm just wondering, Kent, can't we put the thematic bubbles on showing Asian? Yes, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, and let's see if it's appropriate. Thank you, Commissioner Orton. I'm trying to find it here. Not Hispanic, Asian, alone. This see what we see if this is correct and just flagging for commissioners that we have a stop at 340. so you have you have bigger population over toward that's non-hispanic intrusion it's not showing the percentages but it's showing you the numbers i can get the percentages up there non-Hispanic, I believe that's Asian alone, yes. Okay, we're looking at uh, percentages now. 
generally over 10% will be the dots. Over in Sterling Heights, you mean? Sterling Heights. See, so, yeah, it's heavy in Troy. It's heavy in Troy. It, it, did we not no, pick, the, uh, not pick the right I'm field? Non-Hispanic, Asian. Is <laughs> AS is Asian. Let me check. We'll take a quick look here. Um, a, an easy way to do it. Just a quick check to make sure I am bringing up the right data. That's population Asian alone, 10,960. Not Hispanic. So while, while you're doing that, let me ask Anthony a question. Given that we've taken out Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills area that we took out, that really only left West Bloomfield over there, which has, so what's the significance of combining those two and in, in, in going south for another district? Well, yeah, since I'm right after you in the turns, what I was thinking is, um, you know, this is a lot harder for the Senate maps than it is for the House maps. The House maps is, you know, you can put all of these True. townships yeah. essentially in their own districts, but it's yeah. a little harder for the Senate map. But I would I would suggest having Orchard Lake, West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Commerce, uh, Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills, and Royal Oak all together to make a very diverse district that supports communities of interest. Um so that would that would yeah. be basically everything to the west of what you drew and a little bit south. Uh, you do have Clawson there, which I would yeah. suggest taking as a part of Troy. Yeah, I, I was thinking that too, because they're trying to combine school districts right now. Um, but I, I wanted to look at it from a bigger picture. That's why I asked you the question. Did you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So yeah, let's continue to work over at Sterling Heights. So. Let's see where we are population wise if we do everything west of Van Dyke Road, which is west of Sterling, that Sterling Heights sign. This, this area right here. Yeah, and even, yep. And Commissioner Clark, you're keeping Birmingham with Troy? Oh, yes, I am. And I'm going to probably add Clawson in too. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Is that the area? And, and one more east of the big way out, that one there. Okay. Now, that your, leaves your us, district is 14,758 people high. Or high. Okay. Take that last one out that we just did. The, yeah. No, 11,000 people high. We're still high. Take the next row out. Well, there's the numbers. There's 4,800 4, here, 2,500, 3,800. Um, Commissioner Orton. Take them all out. Yeah, take them all out. So, Commissioner Clark, I don't know this area real well, but what about that top township? Does that... I don't know the population either. What's it, what township? It, the, the very top township. Oh, Shelby, district, Town, Shelby it Township. It has less Asian bubbles. In yeah. It. Well, I, I want to take this out, okay. and and we're going to be short then. You're down eight. You're minus 18,000. Okay, add Clawson in. You're at minus 2.74% or 7,270 okay. Um, And we still, okay, and we still have that part of Sterling Heights in, but that bounces up against Troy where, where we see a lot of the uh, 
uh, Asian population, I believe. Yeah. So, Commissioner Clark, what I heard um, Commissioner Orton suggesting was maybe if, if you are trying to sort of respect the, the Asian American vote here, you might consider removing the the northernmost, the Shelby Township, and sort of being able then to add more Asian. I don't, I don't think we have Shelby Township in. Let me, I said Shelby, but I'm not sure if it, whatever the northernmost. Rochester Hills. Above that, Rochester Hills, I think oh. was what oh, Commissioner Oakland, Orton was. Oakland Township? It, yeah, that's that. I think that's what Commissioner Orton was suggesting. So that's, and she's nodding her head. Yeah, the. <sighs> Rochester Hills spills over into Oakland Township. And goes north, and it probably goes as far north as even outside Oakland Township, up in toward Addison. But I, I'm not going to. I don't want to include those. So that no, I, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, I appreciate the help. Um, is Clawson in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so oh. we're we're within range. You are less than three percent from ideal. Okay, well, and what's that do to the total aggregate for the for the townships we've dealt or with the districts we've dealt with? You're, you're underpopulated, which helps because we've been mostly overpopulated. Yeah, I'm underpopulated. If we're overpopulated, that'll help us. And. We're I can run the numbers real quick. No. Hmm? I, I believe that what you've drawn is excellent, but I do believe, yeah. think that Kent is going to try to get us the numbers. I tend to want to go with this, but I want to see the number first. Not right. So no. Oh, that's from 21. Sorry, 21 shouldn't be included because that's obviously mm -hmm. that district's not done. So, yeah, I'd take that one out. So now you're 4.36% high across the board. High, and, and I'm low on the district I just did. So that'll and you're benefit at, us. Let's uh, leave it like the district, like it is then. Yes. Mr. Adelson, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is more of a, a comment going forward because there's there doesn't seem there's not enough um, data for me to opine conclusively. But it does seem to me, in moving forward, that Troy and Sterling Heights had or have large uh, Asian populations. So this is one of those areas to to look at as far as. You know, plan A, plan, or I shouldn't say plan, option A, option B, in what would happen if we do this? What would happen if we do that? So if Troy and Sterling Heights combined, for example, have a significant Asian population and they're split, then that has a dilutive capacity for the, for the Asian American vote. So it's something to be aware of and, and having more mm -hmm. information on the screen would be really helpful. But, but, but one of the things, Bruce, is Warren has a significant amount of Asian population from the Bangladesh people. Oh, I, I understand this. And I guess this is this is what my son tells me I do sometimes. It's yeah. just kind of like throwing something into the, the match, into the fire. Just think of, be aware of that. Okay. And going forward, there, there are, as we get, you know, we're in Detroit and Oakland, this will be true to an extent in Flint and Saginaw, that there are these considerations. And when you when you have relatively large populations that are protected by the Voting Rights Act, it's important to watch out for a dilutive effect. If you have two large communities and they're separated, what that means. So again, I'm not I'm not um, giving in a legal opinion or saying anything conclusive, but just an FYI going forward in this area to be, to look at. Thank okay. you. And then Commissioner Clark, this is time, but I was just gonna highlight, I know you said there's another Asian community in, in Warren, but we're talking about two different Asian communities when we're talking about the Bangladesh and Warren and the folks that are in Troy and Sterling Heights. I know because I go to the markets in Sterling Heights and Troy <laughs> for different things, yeah. Um, Commissioner Orton, please. So 
this is a question for what you said, Mr. Adelson. Um, so are you suggesting, or would it be good for us to then make a second option, make a copy of our map with a second possible option? Because I think what you're saying is it can't be evaluated until we make a draft of it, and then it would be evaluated to see if there's a problem or not. Thank you. I think that's a great point. I think that goes to the strength of, the, of your process in that you're constantly making adjustments so that you have your draft, then eventually you'll have your final and everything is in flux and moving forward. So yes, that that being aware of these large minority populations, the possibility of diluting a minority vote strength by splitting large communities into more than one district, all of that does have potential. Um, and it is better to, to get a full read of something, I agree. When you have a, you know, a, a more finalized, a more complete product. Uh, so, so yes, I think that, you know, whether you choose to make a copy or not, of course, I'll defer to, to your judgments, but that these, it's really important as a dynamic to see that in this area, everything is in flux. As we're just looking at the map on the screen now and looking at some of the, the larger circles that that may um, militate in favor of reconsideration at some point. So I hope that, I hope that helps. Thank you, Mr. Adelson. We have one last comment from Kent before we move on. Uh, the, the numbers you see on the screen now, the top number is the total population. The second number is the Asian population, uh, Asian alone in itself. So you have 10,960 Asians in the Sterling Heights Township, 23,805 in the Troy Township, 11,570 in Rochester. As a side note, Sterling Heights, Troy, and Rochester combined is too large for a single Senate district. Thank you. Okay, commissioners. Um, and Sarah, you're okay with the justifications for Commissioner Clark? Okay. Yeah, I'm Thanks. good with this district. I, do I have questions to answer? All set? Okay. Okay, great. Thank we're going to move on in the agenda. So we did some mapping and that's going to be, we're going to put a pause on the mapping. And now um, we will cover the discussion of meeting times. And I believe that discussion was going to be <laughs> led by the smiling face next to me, uh, Vice Chair Zatella. That was hilarious. Thank you. So, um, we probably don't have time to finish this discussion, so maybe we can pop it over, but I just want to um, throw this out there to give people something to think about. Um, I know last week when I had to leave early, there was some discussion about moving the meeting start times to nine o'clock. Um, and I know that it has been set at 10 o'clock at my request, but I have obtained before school childcare for my children, so I can now make a nine o'clock meeting time. So if the commission is interested in moving those meeting times till nine o'clock, I would, I would be perfectly fine with that. And I want to make sure that people didn't think that we were holding it at 10 for me, because I am fine with moving it to nine. The second issue I wanted to talk about was, um, <clears throat> I feel like we're kind of running out of time. And as we move into the Detroit area, it's more difficult here. So this is just a suggestion. And, and Edward, this is not in any way, shape, or form um, dismissive of the work that you have done in setting up these meetings on Thursdays. But I was wondering if the commission might be potentially interested in having our Thursday meetings at whatever location we are for the next two weeks, whatever location we are currently at, so that we aren't losing time traveling to meetings. Like we spent three hours, at least I did, in the car today. Um, that I would rather spend that time mapping. So I was wondering if for the rest of September or for at least the next two weeks, we could move those Thursday meetings rather than having them at universities, having a nine to five meeting on Thursdays as well to give us more time. And again, I don't know that that's even gonna be technically possible because I don't know if we have the space and, and whether we can arrange that and we might be breaking contracts with, with Grand Valley and Central, but it's just something I, I wanted to suggest. And then the third thing I wanted to talk about is potentially adding Friday meetings as well for the next two weeks while we continue working on mapping. So those were kind of the three things I wanted to throw out there to see 
what we were thinking about, but I feel like we've kind of run out of time. So maybe we can chew on it and pick it up again when we come back at five o'clock. Commissioners, do you have any preliminary thoughts? Talk now or chew later? Okay, um, <laughs> Commissioner Clark. Uh, as far as changing times and locations, I think we've had enough changes. We should just keep it as is. Um, and, and I know, I think we got some discounts because we came back to certain locations as well. So Edward would have to speak to that. But um, I mean, I personally, I've, because we we adjusted the times and the dates, I, I've scheduled personal things on the off times already. So. And it just gets difficult to, to constantly change all this stuff. I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. Oh, Commissioner Lang. I'm going to second Commissioner Clark. And, and I understand that this is our, we volunteered for this and it's important. But, you know, something was said today to me that we are, just everyday citizens and we do have lives outside of here. And I personally have had to move doctor's visits multiple times because of the changes in our schedule. So adding Fridays definitely would be a, a big inconvenience for me. With that being said, whatever the commission decides is fine, but just know if we do go to Fridays, I will be missing because it's it's getting hard to get these appointments that are needed. Thank you, Commissioner Lang. Is there any other thoughts? Commissioner Rothorn. I'll just say ditto. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, Commissioner. So it sounds like something that we're not going to change at the moment. If it comes up again, of course, because it's our will to have those discussions, that's fine. But it, for the purposes of time, I'm gonna move on to um, item seven in our agenda, which is the review and approval of minutes. Moving on to agenda item seven, we have minutes from August 30th to approve today. Are there any proposed edits to the proposed minutes? Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of August 30th, 2021? So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Witches, second by second. Commissioner Lett. All in favor of approving these MICRC meeting minutes of August 30th, 2021, please signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed, signify by raising your hand and saying nay. The ayes have it and the motion passes. Um, moving on to item eight, staff reports. We don't have any staff reports today. That would bring us to the MDOS report. Without objection, I will ask Sarah Reinhardt from the Michigan Department of State if she has a report. Hearing no objection, please proceed Ms. Reinhardt if there is a report. I have no report today. Thank you. Thank Madam you, Ms. Reinhardt. Um, correspondence was received in advance of our meeting today and was provided along with written public comments to the commission in our meeting materials. Um, moving to future agenda items, it is my understanding that there are no future agenda items to share at this time. Are there any announcements? Seeing no hands and hearing no one crying out for announcements, um, the items on our agenda are completed and the commission has no further business. A motion to adjourn is in order. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Witches. Is there a second? Second made by Commissioner Rothhorn. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, raise your hand and say nay. The ayes have it. Meeting is adjourned at 3.15.